Hey, this is Michael the Count Bisping. Did you know that we do this show live every Monday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern? Well, you can listen live exclusively at gasdigitalnetwork.com. Gas Digital members not only get that live stream, but also live chat, archived episodes, plus brand new episodes nearly a full day before they go on iTunes, Google Play, or anywhere else. We've also got a bunch of other great shows on the network, like The Just A Show, Legion of Skanks, Bruce Buffer, It's Time, and many, many more. That's gasdigitalnetwork.com. When you check out, use the promo code BYM, and you save $1 on the monthly membership plus you get a 14 day free trial to see if you like it that's just six bucks a month that's gasdigitalnetwork.com promo code bym when you check out and even if you can't subscribe you can help us out by subscribing on itunes and leaving a positive review and a five-star rating thanks for listening conceive believe achieve shut the fuck up <laughs> This is Believe You Me on the Gas Digital Network. Oh shit, here we go. It's another episode of Believe You Me, episode 36. Fucking huge, huge show today. This is the this is the one. Is it? Is, most people this say this is the sh- one. Is it, Lewis? Most people say you shouldn't do this show. All right. So every really, they say I shouldn't do this show. Why? Yeah, because you're fucking doing a podcast the week of the biggest fight of your life. Listen, if I wasn't here chit chatting to you, I'd be sat in a room somewhere else chit chatting to the same people, but you just wouldn't be here. That's true, and you we know? wouldn't get, be getting paid for that chit chat. Yeah. Well, well. Hopefully, we're getting paid for this one. Are we generating any money? I think we are. We got uh, a few... diminishing checks, my friend. We have a few <laughs> ad reads. Those checks are gonna go up. Let's go. Fucking <laughs> bet DSI. <laughs> Um, um, so listen, for everybody that doesn't know, in the room right now we have the UFC embedded camera, which is going to get fucked off in about two minutes. We have Harrington, of course, Audit Atar, Superstar Manager, Paradise Sports, Brady Fink, Jiu-Jitsu Master, Jason Perillo, and uh, of course the Puerto Rican. Reeton, Regan. That's okay. You can Rattles do whatever you want. I'm I'm amongst uh, a, a bunch of professionals in their field, and I'm just happy to be here. I'm not gonna lie, guys. Good. I'm just gonna eat some cashew nuts. You so just maybe, eat, maybe talk to Audie for a second. You just eat directly into the microphone, Mike. That's it's the like best thing. Tennis or ping pong game right now. I'm just going back and forth like this. Yeah, right Audie, Audie, very happy to have you on the show. Uh, we've had you call into the radio show before. Never had you in studio. Uh, we we have had Perillo. Who, by the way, is fucking... I, I didn't realize how nice your voice is until just a few minutes ago when you were doing your mic check. It's really... <laughs> Thank you, Lewis. Thank you. Sexy. It's, it's got like a silky well, smoothness What's wrong to with it. my voice? It's a, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. It's not only... I know, it... I know. Every time I hear my voice back, which unfortunately, I'm one of those assholes that... You know, Instagram stories and whatnot. And when I hear it back, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Shit, I brought the headphones. Is that how I sound? Is that? I mean, let's have an example. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's going to show his Instagram story right now. So, <laughs> well, here's the problem with your voice. Not only is it like a shitty British accent, which it just isn't it's not like. not a shitty British accent. It's not one of the nice ones. Oh, look at this. Fuck you, you fucking fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't too bad, actually. You're <laughs> such a tourist. It, for, hey, this is an audio there's a show. T-shirt that said "fuck you, you fucking fuck." Michael Bisping is taking videos in Times Square, <laughs> like a fucking <laughs> tourist. Instead of going to like, what are you cool- talking about? Last night when I was running with my team. Probably, yeah. Yeah, last night I went running late night. Yeah. We just got in New York, got off the plane, quick stretch, you know, professional athlete style, and uh, we went for a run. Now our hotel is close to Times Square, so to get. To where we want to run. Unfortunately, Lewis, I can't teleport, so we had to run through Times right. Square. Okay, you know. And as how a was team? How was that? Let me ask you a question because New York almost has an attitude to it, where everyone thinks they're a fucking rock star. Everyone thinks they're the champion of the world in New York. You could be a cab driver, you could be a banker, you could be a fucking person who sells flowers on a corner, right? Yeah. Did you get recognized a lot by people in New York yet? Yeah, it was awesome. As I'm yeah. running down the street, people are shouting out, "Hey, Bisbee, hey, champ, good luck, all that stuff." 
So it's great. I mean, as a professional fighter, I mean, that's what you want. You know, when you're running down the street and people are shouting stuff like that. It's like, you know, it's, it's like being Rocky, you know, when he's running through the market. And Did stuff. a bunch of kids start following you guys? No, they didn't. Thanks, Lewis. Thanks for, thanks for ruining it completely. <laughs> that didn't happen. A couple of fucking pizza guys said, fuck you, Bisping. You know, hey, you suck. Uh, a couple of times. You know, there were certainly no kids. Uh, you know, I got chased by a couple of crackheads. I think it was your uncle. Um, um, but yeah, no, no, it was great. It was great. I I love running in cities because it doesn't feel like I'm running because so much mental stimulation. And then, of course, you know, you're, you're ducking and diving, you're bobbing and weaving, you're stepping inside. You know, I'm jumping over things, over ballards, dodging people, nearly knocking over old ladies and kids. And But, you know, you, you're like this the whole time. You yeah. know, it keeps side your, to side. It keeps your muscle fibers reflexes, firing off. Reflexes, yeah, yeah. David. It's, it's, it's great. Okay, now, if I can run that's through Times Square at that speed, GSP is not going to catch me. He's that's not going to do shit. That's, a, that's the truth. We, listen, we got a great show planned. Incredible show planned. We've uh, got nothing planned, Lewis. I have a lot planned. First of all, motherfucker, look Look at your notes that are right in front of you. It's incredible. You don't even care. He threw him to the side. He's just smashing nuts into his face right now. No homo. And uh, <laughs> we have, I, I put a lot. I'm sorry. I am eating. I just worked out. I'm skinny as hell. Yeah. I, but I need to get skinnier. How are you I need to right lose now? 15 pounds by Friday. How much do you weigh right now? After I just worked out then, I was 200 pounds. 200 pounds. Okay. So I'm going to be 185. But is this, is this where you are normally at? Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. I'm pretty good. This, this is where I need to be. So, ask Audie some questions about Conor McGregor and Tony Ferguson. While you finish your nuts, while I eat these, okay. interview well, him, get the we're juiciness the out of him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna eat these nuts. No homo. I'm gonna drink this thing, and then I'm gonna come back with a vengeance. Beautiful, Audie. Over to you. Boom. Audie, I, I, yeah, actually, I wanted to ask you this because this is interesting. Um, Audie is, you know, obviously uh, uh, Michael Bisping's manager, but if you don't know this, also the manager to Conor McGregor, also the manager to uh, Tony Ferguson. Both of them. Stephen won the boy Thompson. I mean, the list Stephen goes Wonderboy on. Larkin. But Audie this is else. pretty fucking incredible. I mean, Chris fucking Weidman. You're, <laughs> you're managing two guys that are Who probably... Chris Weidman? That are going to probably fight at one point. Does that <laughs> happen? You're going to eat your nuts. <laughs> you know, actually, um, it, it, the, the, um, the sport, obviously, is... is uh, is one where it, 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 they're going to compete. If the, if we have clients in the same weight class, they're natu- and they're the top of the division. They're going to meet. It was going to happen with Weidman and, and Bisping first. Yeah, um, I think that was the first client uh, collision course, if you will, that was going to happen for us. So hold on, hold now. on. But 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 realistically, the order. Remember, I was with you a long time before Weidman, and you came to me and said, "Do you mind if Absolutely. I if I sign Weidman?" I said, "No, I don't give a fuck. Absolutely. Sign Weidman." Couldn't. So you but, kind of but if that fact, was to happen, fact, Weidman can go fuck himself. In, in fact, in fact, Michael, but you kind of signed in, Weidman in a weird way. In, 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 Say again. <laughs> you kind of signed Weidman in a weird way. Yeah. In, yeah. In, in, fact, in, fact, well, in fact, in fact, he was very classy about it. I go to all my clients about it because you know there's you, you have to be respectful, about, especially to the guys that have been with you first, right? Yeah. But with Tony and Connor, it's it's inevitable, right? You have the lightweight champ and you have the interim lightweight champ, so that's that's a fight that's naturally going to happen. It's not going to be fun. From a, I've been saying this on a human level, not comfortable, right? Yeah. It's good for business. Everybody said you should be happy, but the end oh of the day, yeah, I mean for your your bank account, it has to yeah, fucking at, rule. At the end of the day, though, they're both. I wish happy. that we had a video on his and, face and right I, now. He yeah, can't yeah, even no, hide I know. The smile. So, and I tried it, and I try to remind them that at the end of the day, they both do this for the same reason. They both have families. They may talk shit, get fired up, compete. Tempers flaring, but at the end of the day, they're professional athletes. And they're both doing it for the same reason. So, Audie, let me ask you this. So, and, and and of course, if you don't want to answer the question, you are entitled to not answer the question. Of course, um, in recent weeks, Dana has said, you know, oh, the fight that makes sense. The fight that makes sense is Tony Ferguson and Conor McGregor. That is the fight that makes sense, but that doesn't mean it's the fight that's going to happen. Right. Well, absolutely. Uh, of you, course, we're you, talking you know, about Nate Diaz. Yeah. And, and so, you can that. you can, so can you say which way or not this is trending? No, I can't say that. Yeah, yeah. So it's trending. Nate Diaz. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, it's Nate you Diaz. Know, you know, I wouldn't do that. But at the Blink end of the day, here's, what, here's, what, here's, what, here's what I'll tell you. Here's what, here's what I will tell you. Um, Tony earned the shot at the at at, at the belt. He won the interim t- lightweight title. Connor doesn't shy away from a challenge. The Nate fight does make sense, obviously, the, because of the trilogy. No, no, no. They never fought at No, the Tony fight makes sense is well, what they're well, saying. Well, but but they both make sense, right, in, in their own respective way. However, I do believe that, you know, obviously when, when both guys go at it, um, it will, in my opinion, validate the belt system. It will validate 
you know what what a, a, a championship belt's all about, and that that's that's the fact. So I do agree with you on that. Yeah, no, no. no. So, but do you think? I mean, I mean, of course, Dana wants to make the biggest fights, and I think no disrespect to Tony. Tony's an amazing fighter, and I've always thought that. Uh, but but the big money fight really is Diaz three. You know, I, I think Connor, and this is I've said this as well. I think. Connor's next fight, whoever it is, is big. Come How, I mean, why would somebody who's a champion not take the fight that's the interim belt? You know, yeah. I, you know, because because shame on them. Yeah, wait, hold shame, on. I, shame, I just realized shame on them that not taking pattern. the fight against the interim champion for a money fight. There's because a you pattern. want this from a lighter weight class that's been retired for four this years. This is not my Michael Bisping problem. <laughs> How this, dare that motherfucker! This is not a Michael Bisping problem. Right. This is not a Conor McGregor problem. Right. McGregor problem. This right. is an Odiatar problem. It seems oh, the oh, common yeah, denominator oh. is that Odiatar's clients. Hey, hey, hey! He don't say that to division. Dana White. He's <laughs> <laughs> already on the Christmas card <laughs> list. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on behind the scenes? Look, that Odiatar, he it, throws it, the rule book out the window. Listen, he doesn't play by the rules. The reality of it is, is the, it's the natural UFC MMA market system moving in its weird way. Yeah. He, sh- I mean, he would have fought Whitaker. Of course, I, everybody thinks he's ducking everybody. It's <laughs> funny the way shit works out. And then I accepted the fight against Whitaker exactly, and, and Romero. And why would he not take a GSP super fight? If Whitaker's hurt, why would he not take a GSP super fight? Of course, right? All the fans want to see it. It makes sense in terms of bringing a, a legend against a legend while the interim champ is healing. Hmm. It's plain and simple. There's no other clear contender in line right now. So. At the end of the day, I think you know there's a lot of naysayers out there, but all of them will still tune in. I have a question for you. Dana White came out and said that Connor broke the uh, the Connor and Floyd broke the pay per view record. What's going on with that? Because at first they said that no, he didn't. We did, we did, and that's that's what upset me. I think UFC on Fox reported that we came in second, which was not true. Uh, uh, and and I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but I do okay. remember May Ma- May six point seven, I believe, was uh, but May packed in the, in the up, mid Harrison. to high fours. And domestically, they were in the low fours. We beat them domestically, and we shattered them internationally. I mean, internationally, we we I mean, we've done, we did numbers that nobody ever did, and we also shattered the, the illegal streaming records. As All right, well. okay. Listen, I've eaten my nuts. Okay, so I'm back. All right, and I just want to say, listen. We, that really we all That's love Conor there. McGregor, but That's we're not talking there. about him for the next fucking hour. Okay? This is, I want to what a psychopath Michael Bisping is. He literally wanted us to stop the conversation the second he finished his bag of nuts. <laughs> no, because like, you, we're no, done no, 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 you're, going, you're going down an avenue which I'm sick of talking about. Do you know what I mean? Ooh, this let's all swing news. up Conor's nuts. This is all new right? news. This is my podcast. Let's talk about my fight <laughs> and my pay per view numbers. All right, fine. It's my party and I'll cry if I want to. Hey, I did not invite you up here to buzz my ball. On it, that's for damn sure. All right, um, let's uh, let's talk about uh, the fight this weekend, okay? Um, it's fight week, it's fucking it's the real deal here. Um, are you guys all in town now for the whole week? Yes, we're here. Well, obviously, we got in late last night, went for a run, as I said, today, Sunday, and uh, yeah, I mean, typically for a fight, you probably know you don't have to be there until Tuesday, so we just came in. I mean. I, I, I train Monday to Friday, Saturday Saturday morning I'll also train. And then you're just hanging around, so I thought, well, I'll come in because I'm not doing anything over the weekend anyway. Might as well hang out in New York, obviously uh, record the podcast and just get over the flight, get over the time difference. Even though it's only three hours, it can mess with you a little bit. So, uh, yeah, get in town, soak up the energy, soak up New York. You guys went to a bar last night and watched the fights, right? No, we watched no, it in my we hotel room. Oh, watched it in my hotel. hotel room. They all ordered rooms. Well, in fact, this is what a good guy I am. Oh, boy. Right? No, it's true, though. <laughs> oh, Chef Ipono, if you're in the Orange County area, Chef Ipono uh, delivered, well, sorry, made, created all my meals. They're all dated Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, meal one, meal two, and it's all very boring stuff. Except but for del- all those meals that you got but, from Thrive Market that we're going to talk about later but, on on but, the show. But delicious. What is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> shit. Um, but, um... <laughs> but but they came up to my room to watch the fights, but the room service stopped serving at 11 o'clock. And I'm like, well, I'll order some food for them. I ordered them all cheeseburgers with fries and bacon. I ordered them two pints of Stella Artois each, water, all the trimmings. They came up. There, there it is. A delicious feast of carbs and fat and fries it's unbelievable and beer. food, right? It, and it, you know how people and I just food, sit there in my room. It literally is food porn for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there and I'm like eating fucking broccoli and, uh, you know. You know, <laughs> fresh air basically and lettuce. But I got this for them. Now, yeah. 
I think a round of applause is in order, everybody. Oh, uh, we already. We, we uh, let's give him another. One. Well, come on. Let's give him another one. And we actually thanked him. I got no thanks. We thanked Zero. him. Zero. No. Hey, not only do we thank him, he te- he 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 tells us exactly how to eat it because it's literally food porn for him. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but I, I don't want to hey, get you food like this. I don't want to get you food and you like not this. dip that shit in mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah, uh, look, it's a great thing you did, but you're not supposed to brag about it on your podcast that you did that. Do you think George St. Pierre is bragging about the poutine and the fucking French <laughs> food that he bought his <laughs> team? I don't know what George St. Pierre was doing right now. <laughs> Probably sacking himself up in the mirror, looking at yeah. him. Yes, uh, you, you, you can do this, George. You can do this. <laughs> did you see what his, uh, I guess, his mentor, I don't even know who this is. This is Yeah, uh, Christophe Medu. Who, who is Chris, Christophe, so Christophe Medu? Christophe Medu is uh, like um, an MMA pioneer. He's one of the early, because obviously, in France, um, MMA is banned. It's, it's not legal. Christophe Madou was one of the early pioneers, one of the first guys, and obviously George being French, Canadian, uh, maybe he lives in Montreal now, I'm not sure. And they've been close. They've been you know, very close for a long time, and he was his mentor. And uh, yeah, it broke last week because Christophe, obviously being French, did a French podcast with Patrick Cote, and on that, uh, and I only know about this because of Ariel Helwani. Helwani spotted it. I saw that he asked him about it on the M- you know on the MMA hour. So I asked Helwani about it, and he wouldn't tell me. But I did some sniffing, and I, I got some information from someone who speaks French. And basically, he said that. When he looked at GSP, he didn't see what he wanted to see. He's not performing well. He looked slow. He doesn't under, He doesn't like the fight. doesn't like the fact he's at 185. And he said he's having no part of it. And he's left the camp. And he's not going to be at the fight. He's not going to be in his corner. He's having zero part wow. in it. Wow. His eyes do not tell me anything good, he said in French. What's that in French? Harrington, look that up. Uh, his eyes do not tell me busy, 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 uh, anything busy. good, you know? <laughs> but let me ask you a question, because a lot of people are saying, speculating online, they go, it's like, oh, dude, they're trying to they're trying to send us, like, mixed signals to Bisping's camp. Bisping's not dumb. He's not going to fall for that. You, do, uh, you... oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read that, and I decided to take a week off. <laughs> I was like, yeah, get me a bur- I-, I want a beer and a cheeseburger. Because uh, Christophe Madou says, his eyes do not tell me what I want to know. i got to stop talking French like that. Um, no, no, listen, I'm expecting the best GSP ever. I really am. You you know, that, that, that's, that's what you got to prepare well, for. Are, are, you're preparing for the best GSP. Are you really, though? Because I'm not. As a fan, I'm not expecting really? the best GSP ever. Really? Because I keep ever. seeing that. I'm, nope. See, this is why I think you're crazy, and that's why Christoph Madu, maybe he saw him at the start of camp or something like that, and he wasn't happy. But George is one of those guys. George is a consummate professional. He's a hard worker. He's very, he has a very cerebral approach to everything he does. So... He's been away for four years. Don't tell me that asshole hasn't been with sports psychologists. He hasn't been, you know, he's, he's done his diet, his nutrition, he's, he's built his body mass so he's stronger, he's suited to the weight class. He's studied me like a bloody, uh, you know, he studied me very, very closely. So he's done everything he can and he's not going to come back and make an asshole of himself. Is Well, I'm going to make sure that he does, but he's going to make sure that he doesn't, you know. so he's, <laughs> Whose who side are you on? No, I know. I, I don't even know what I'm saying right now. <laughs> You're uh, talking him off a little no, bit too no, much. No, 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 but he's that type of guy though. He yeah. is the consummate professional and he does what needs to be done. So I'm expecting a big, strong, fast, explosive George St. Pierre. Now, that said, in the promo things, I've got to say, he does look very cumbersome and doesn't seem... You know, there's the, when he's hitting the bags in that, that, that white room on that promo, mm. he looks kind of fucking... He looks terrible. He looks right. awful, and he looks a little fat and a little impregnated by aliens. But, but you don't um, have a Hall of Fame career that he's had, and, and now he's defended the belt, and he'll defend it again on November 4th without taking people seriously, no matter who it is. So of you course. Gotta, you, That's you, it. You prepare at your level. Uh, you, when you're a tenured fighter at the level he's been at, you have to prepare yeah. at the level you prepare at, no matter who you're facing. Yeah. The, 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 reason, the, the reason I say that I don't... There's some, you've, you've talked about this in the past, and we've talked to other fighters about this. I think there's a difference between you know, training and, and learning and growing, and then there's a difference between competing at the highest level of fighting where the stakes are so fucking high. You know what I'm saying? So George being off for four years, I'm, I'm sure that he went out there and he's learned a lot, and I'm sure that he's been in, you know continuing to grow as a martial artist, but there's just something about the sport evolving and the guys that have been competing at the highest level, especially on a championship level, where I think that that is... There's just something about that that I think really means something. And George looked like he was fading in his last few fights. It wasn't the same dominant George St. Pierre that we had seen. A lot of people thought that he lost the Johnny Hendricks fight. Um, You know, the Nick Diaz fight was way closer than it should have been. Um, You know, 
George used to completely dominate dudes, and he started getting beat up by guys who... Yeah, but, you know, I mean, it's easy to say that, but he was, and this is part of the reason he stepped away. And again, I'm not defending him. You just got to see, you you gotta, you gotta you see both sides. Yeah, you know the sport. Um, he was fighting at the highest level. He's fighting championship fight after championship fight, and the pressure. And so you're fighting the best guy out there, and, the, and you're fighting guys that that's their title shot. That's what they want. They've worked their entire life to get that. So you're fighting guys in the peak of their career each and every time. So he wanted, um, yeah, I'll do another Harrington, please, as well, if you don't mind. Um, you know, so you, you mentioned something. Uh, which a lot of people have mentioned about the sport moving on, but I don't see that. I mean, ultimately, a lot of things are still the same, you know? I mean, he's been training with John Danahar, but Danahar was in his corner the last few fights. Brady Fink tells me, my jiu-jitsu coach over there, he says that he's been in the corner the last few times. So I don't think we're going to see anything particularly new. I think we're going to see the, the same mold, George St. Pierre. I just think he's going to be a bit bigger and a bit stronger. But who knows? As Jason was saying, that might slow him down a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think that um, yeah, there's uh, there's something about. Sorry, Michael Bisping is opening his bags of potato chips and and nuts. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, look, here's the thing, man. I, I I think there's when you when I say the sports evolved, I wish my when Mike comes back, I, what I want him to do is I want him to look at four years ago. George. Where we were, and not just George. I'm talking about the sport in general. Like, who was the champions? What, what well, I'll tell you right now. 2013. I fought uh, Vitor Belfort, and then I fought Alan Belcher, and then that was when I detached my retina. And then, I, you know, 2013. There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. So. I, I, I think that, I, but I do think that in the past, I think that in the not past. Not a lot's changed. What's changed? People keep saying that. How can the sport have changed? Listen, it, it's changed in terms of public perception. It's changed in terms of money. It's changed in terms of Reebok deals and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but, the, but the flip but, side, but the, I think, the, they think the, is because the, the, the same ring nuts ring. and bolts are fighting. What about like. It's still <laughs> the same. Yeah, but. You they, know what I mean? There, they, might, there they, might be a few extra little newfangled techniques or whatever, or people might train a little different, or maybe people are saying less than You don't think the guys today, even like you, Michael Bisping today, could you beat up Michael Bisping 2013, or would it be a close? I'd I say mean, so. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I've definitely developed and got better. Yeah, uh, wouldn't be a walk in the park, but I, I'd say so for sure. That's why I'm the champion now. But um, that's what the critics are saying is because he's been out for so long, and, he, and you've continuously not only trained but have taken fights. You're constantly evolving as an athlete, as a fighter. Whereas, call it ring rust, call it what you want. That's what the critics are saying is because he's been out for so long, coming well, up a weight class hey, against a. a, a hey, senior, I hope so. Tenured fighter like yourself. I hope that's so. The risk I, I hope so. But, 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 is that but what you're saying? Right. I, 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 as a fighter, you can't think like that. You can't, you know, you can't think. Oh, yeah, he's had four years away. I'm, I'm thinking the opposite. I'm thinking he's extra motivated and then gone to extra lengths because of that. And George is that type of person. And and believe it, he's he's very very confident. You know, when we've sat in those press conferences, pardon me, the press conferences, I can see a confident man. For sure, and he does. He believes it. We wrestled a long time ago. I spoke about this, and and he, and he dominated me there. So he thinks he's still going to do the same. Yeah. But uh, people are sick of us talking about GSP every week. It is the big fight. I'm 200 pounds right now. I've got 15 pounds to lose. That's going to be a pain in the ass. Um, talk to me because I want to talk about last night's fights. But real quick, you you had a thing with Cody Garbrandt this week. Not really. I like Cody Garbrandt. Cody's... Cody. He does not like you, apparently. Really? <laughs> Why was he been saying? Well, did you... I mean, you guys got into a little tour. He tweeted about you. What'd he say? What, do you, are you really ignorant to all of this right now? I don't fucking... <laughs> Cody Garbrandt. Cody Garbrandt tweeted out, uh, let's be honest here, Bisping, your fight is a gimme fight, and the only hype around it is that George that is George's comeback. And then he tweeted out, no disrespect to Rose or Joanna, I think they're great fighters, but the, we know who the real main event is November 4th. Yeah, well, that's all well and good because he's hyping his fight. But like I said the other day, yeah. when I got asked about it at the UFC media day, I'm like, I've never paid to watch two men fight over the size of my fucking legs, right? My son... Callum could beat the piss out of Co <laughs> Cody and TJ put together. And I will backhand Callum in my fucking sleep, okay? If that shit ever steps out of line, Callum knows where it's at. And if Cody wants to step up, I'll send Callum round and uh, he can sort him out. And I said, Cody needs to stop plucking his fucking eyebrows and spend more time in the real world because... Whatever you think, you're not the main event, you little shit. 
All right, good for you, right? Go and try and knock someone out, and uh, and and I hope it's good. But if you check the papers, you're the co-main event, motherfucker. That's fucking f- hilarious. I'll, fucking, I'll backhand my son in, his, in my sleep. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Callum's a good wrestler and all that, but he'll it, it, take fucking them two. Yeah. That's pip squeaks down. Pip squeaks. Unfortunately, you're pip squeaks. That's why you call there the event. There's those eyebrows. <laughs> Come on, man. He plucks those bad boys. And what are we saying about the mascara? Yeah. You well, think there's mascara on there? Possibly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think what it was, I think he those was eyebrows. reacting. Where's that come from? I don't know. Somebody put that out there. Oh, what is really? They could have picked a better picture of me. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I've got the same coat on as now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, I, haven't, I haven't worn this jacket in a year. Last time I was in New York, and that's the one they got. Anyway. Jesus Christ, Bisping hasn't upgraded his jacket since he's become champion. Yeah, What's going on? <laughs> so cheap. In fact, I was, I, I've been a champion for over a year, Lewis. Connor's got fucking one, a new jacket every week. No, oh, well, I do here? apologize. I'm sorry, Lewis. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'll step my game up next time. Because obviously, I'm surrounded by such uh, well-dressed people. He's actually wearing one of the Believe You Me t-shirts. Uh, yeah, nice, which you can get nice. at MerchPump.com right now. Uh, Believe You Me shirts. We have, a, we have another guy. I should even show you the... Maybe I'll show you right now. Tell me what you think. He wanted to design one. He was like, I don't like your t-shirt. I'm going to design you guys a t-shirt. Oh, okay. And then he designed me a new one. I didn't know what the fuck this was, but uh, let me see. You might recognize it. Hold on. What is it? Like a British thing? It's kind of a... Yeah, I guess it's... it's it's your face on a pound. That's what it is. Oh, okay. He likes it. Look, as long as it's his face on it... Oh, shut it. up. <laughs> hey, hey, don't be funny, Lewis, but, you know, if it's your face, we're fucked. It's we're over. We're not selling any. It's over. I know. Oh, I know. Don't you no, worry l- about l- that. L- let's take that? a look. Uh... Look at those two. It's true love. <laughs> it's true love. It's TJ and Cody. Right here. Team no love. I told him, I said, if we, I'll show it to Michael Bisping, and if we like it, uh, tell me how much you would charge us for us to use it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He wants paying? Baby. There's another guy. Actually, I don't even know if they're over here. I'm going to say. I'm going to talk to you about this. Shouldn't, li- sh- sh- shouldn't he just be happy Donate with the, 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 um. That on a shirt? <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's cool. I don't know if people are going to get it. I don't know if it's a t-shirt design, though, I but I kind of like it, though. That's a pound coin with my face in the middle for those listening. No. And instead of the queen's head, it's my face. I mean, I do look good on a pound coin. Just saying. <laughs> you, you, you know, I mean, listen. Fuck the queen. No offense. <laughs> put, put me on. I got shouldn't say it. that. That's treason. I take that back. Is it? No, it's not. <laughs> that is treason. Off with his head. Listen, someone's farting in here. Who is it? Oh, no, 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 Are you sure? No, no. All right, someone's busting ass, I'm telling you, because I keep getting a little I keep getting a little whiff over here, and yeah. it ain't me because I ingested enough calories to fart. I wish. Maybe your fucking protein shake. <laughs> no, no, no. Which no. is all sugar, by the way. I don't know if you're trying to No, it's like, not. It's 10 grams of carbs. Oh, that's not bad. Eight grams. Yeah. yeah. Eight grams of sugar. All right, bro. All right. Anyway, I do muscle milk. I do muscle milk. Should, should we talk? I wanna, I wanna which which contains question. no milk? I know. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> Please. Okay, so I got to do a thing with a fan of this show. This guy, uh, he tweeted me a while ago, and he goes, uh, he goes, it would make my day if you responded to me. They always said was just respond to me, and it would make my day, right? Okay. Direct message on Instagram. So I just wrote him back, you're gay. <laughs> Which is totally, hey. Yeah. I mean, we don't, we don't. Endorse words like that on this. It was podcast. a compliment, and my I thought I was like, yeah, you're a homosexual. That's a that's better than no, straight you're happy. Men. You're happy. That, you're yes, you're, you're a happy go lucky person. person. No, no, no. I was saying he was a homosexual, but what I'm saying is that homosexuals are better than straight white men. I'm I'm uh, I'm on the. Uh, All right, okay, get to the point. I'm a feminist right, warrior. Right, so you said that, and so uh, he goes, "Holy shit, dude! Thank you. That made my day." He knew I was kidding. Yes, right? of course. So then he starts writing me like fucking every other day, like little messages. You open the yeah, I open Pandora's, Pandora's box. Yeah, well, you're a comedian too, so ho- I'm glad he got it. Yeah, he uh, got it. Yeah. He knew it was funny. He laughed. He was like, "Oh, you made my day." So then he starts messaging me every day, and I don't. Freddie's have... perked over the gay comment. Oh, yeah, Freddie <laughs> <very, very, very, laughs> likes the gayness. He's like all of a sudden. He's, <laughs> I saw his ears break up, and he's like, "Ooh, oh, this is... now we're onto something interesting." <laughs> I've got no, I've got no UFC championship to worry about. They have nothing to take away from me. I will. Say gay all the live long well, fucking day. Well, yeah. well, I won't. So yeah, no, he will. You as long as you keep on reprimanding me for doing it on the show, then exactly. you're, you're coming off right. Although there was something. Uh, never mind. I'm what are you gonna dig just... up something yeah. there? Forget <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, so continue I, I never, with the story. As yeah. Audie sits next to Michael Bisping, I, five times already he's kicked him in the ankle to not say something. <laughs> oh. Well, it's it's because obviously as an no, athlete, he's you in the ankle yeah, now. He's, they're, Stop. They're, they're, they're on another pedestal, as you know. You're a comedian. You can make those jokes. 
I was going to make a joke about running through Times Square being a, a an, an Iraqi-born guy with a beard. And yeah. everybody was waving at him and then looking at me like I was doing something wrong. <laughs> but you got to be sensitive, self-aware about the words you choose. Of course. Especially as a professional athlete. Of course. Well, so, yeah. back to the story. Yeah, so okay. you called him gay, so which... Call- which you know, it's it was whatever. awful. It was. I feel bad about it, actually. I, you know, the, really, what I'm bringing it up for is because I'm. I want to publicly apologize to the gay community. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. I'd like to. <laughs> no, it was really small-minded of me, and you know what? To be All honest right, with what you, what happened? They, 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 so, what was the enough. point of the story? Just that? Was no, that no, it? no. So, listen. So, this guy's gonna hit me up every day, and then he gets mad at me because I don't hit him back after like a week or two of him oh, hitting me God, up every day. I hate that jealous so, girlfriend. Yeah, dude. So he's like, he's like, oh, you're, you know, fuck you anyway, dude. You probably, you know, I could probably beat your ass. Anyway, in a fight, oh. so I'm like, at this point, it's kind of funny. So he's like, Why don't you come up to Canada and fight me? I'll pay for your flight. <laughs> Are you serious? I haven't said anything back. Wow, I've said nothing back yet. Okay, and he, at one point, he wrote, He's the guy I trained with GSP, and I'm still rooting for Bisping or something. He was a weirdo, dude. So then I go, uh, then I, I responded. I was like, oh, Now I'm gonna respond because now he wants to fly me to Canada to fight him. I was like, Yes, dude, 100% fly me to Canada. I would love to come up and fight you. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah. And so then he goes like, he's like, do you, you serious, dude? If you want, if you want to do it, come fight. I was like, dude, one hundred percent. I swear to God. He goes, do you, do you, do you, do you think Bisping want to come with you? I was like, dude, I just asked him. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> he's fucking there, dude. He wants to be in my corner. Oh my god. He's, he's gonna train me for it. <laughs> yes, dude. This fucking guy is a psycho. So then he starts to go. Um, he goes. Uh, he's like, when do you want to do this? And then I was like, next Saturday, November fourth. Oh right? my god. <laughs> So then he goes, you think I'm stupid? <laughs> you think I'm dumb? No. You, don't think I, you think I don't know that Bisping's fighting GSP that night and you're going to be doing a comedy show? And then I'm like, dude, you're a fucking psychopath. I'm not coming to Canada to fight you. So then he goes, he's like, I'm going to come to your, your son's uh, karate school and find you. And then I was like, all right, dude. At that point, wow. then I was, like, all right, I was like, all right, I was like, enough being fucking funny. I was like, yeah. you don't bring up somebody's fucking kid yeah, like an yeah, asshole. No ever. I, I know you're just kidding. You know what I'm saying? You're just being an asshole. But once you do that, you're kind of crossing a line, yeah, you know, yeah. so then I ended up blocking him and, and that was that. I'm sure he's listening but I, I only blocked him because that's kind of crossing the line. I don't even give it, like, trolls and shit I don't care about, yeah. but once you bring up somebody's kid, it's another level. I always block trolls. Yeah, yeah, it's I just, always do. It's yeah. just for, I mean, for me, at least, obviously, I'm not a fighter, but that's why. For me, it's a mixture of my own personal life and professional life, and I just have no time for fucking negativity. Like, yeah. I take spend, that shit somewhere else. If I go through all the, the, the comments on Instagram, um, most of my time is dedicated to blocking people. Yeah. You know, for the most part, I mean, I, and, and since I've been doing that, there's obviously now the, the, the amount of haters on there is diminishing. Right. It is going down, so I don't have to do it quite as much. But for example, it's, it's my wife's birthday today. So I put on a little post, you know, you know, a picture of me and her after the Anderson fight. I spent a long time, by the way, going through all my pictures, looking for a nice picture of her. The, the one that she wouldn't get mad that you posted. No, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what women are like? It's like, why did yeah. you pick that one? Because I just got... Like, I, I picked a couple at first, just threw them on there. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, there we go. But and then I'm like, oh, shit, no, I better second guess this. <laughs> Right. And then and then when I was going to post that picture, I took it off because I thought, that's making it about me because I'm all bloodied up when it's supposed to be about her. But I went through all my fucking pictures on my camera roll. Do you know how long that takes? Yeah, that's a long Because time. you have, like, thousands on there, don't you? Go, I'm like, oh, that's still not mine. That's not mine. I thought, oh, fuck it. Dick just put pick, that one dick on. pick, dick yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, but anyway, so it's about my wife. And even still, there's fucking little assholes on there talking shit, saying negative things. I'm like, dude, Really, so I must have blocked 30 people today just being fucking assholes, yeah, just for the sake of it. I'm not doing, I'm just trying to wish my, my wife happy birthday. Can you just stay off, yeah, being a dick well, for, for I, one post? What I don't get is they choose to follow you, but but they just want to fucking troll you, they want to talk yeah. shit, or they just have so much negativity in their own life, they project it out. So I you know, can honestly you know I mean? say, I have never ever gone on social media. Uh, to somebody that I follow and 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 read something and thought, oh, I'm just gonna be a dick. Yeah. yeah. I go, ha, huh, you suck. <laughs> oh, oh my god, <laughs> you're pathetic. <laughs> you're ugly. You know. Why would you do that? I just don't yeah, get I'll tell you it. What it is. Yeah. And, and yeah. You, even you blocking them because I stopped blocking people no, a while I... ago. I blocked that guy because he had mentioned my kid, and I think that's just kind of fucking. I think that's kind of crazy. In my opinion, you don't do that. But I stop blocking trolls because the truth is, what they want is they want a volley, and you're giving them the same mm. attention. Like the. It, I act like I act like I don't even read it. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah. I just move on. The truth is, I've dealt with enough trolls. When you do like podcasts and you're on like weekly shows like this, 
you just deal with a lot of like trolling. People say fucked up shit about your kids. They yeah. say fucked up shit about your, you know. I mean, and plus, dude, I mean, I've I've gone up and down in weight, so people are like, dude, can't wait to die of a fucking. What are you heart weighing attack. right now? I, is that a little vein I see popping out? You buy that? Fucking vascularity, bro. Jesus Christ, crushing Lewis. it. Light, light, light heavyweight. God. Light heavyweight. I've never seen a sideways vein like Lewis, that. Though. Were you bigger? No, no. Were you bigger? Yeah, yeah like like 320, 320, 330, yeah. Really? I've never seen a sideways vein. Put it away. Good That's right, Michael Bisping. I'm, I'm at your old weight class, 205, baby. Don't make awesome, me take man. my shirt off. <laughs> okay, <laughs> make me. You. I'm looking for any you. excuse to get yeah. topless right now. I know you are. And then every time I say, I'm not putting the weight on again after this fight. I'm oh. staying like this. Michael That's posted it. an IG story yesterday of all of us running, and I, it's the first time I ran in a while. I'm like 260 right now. I'm very, very No. Happy. I'm big right You're now. You're 260. And I, we were running, and, and he, he see me in the back, and I'm barely getting my feet up. And it was just like a fucking well, no, we it was went a to shock to me. I was like, no, oh, no, no. shit. And they take a picture, and the guy doesn't even have to mention my name, but he goes... Here are, here are all of us after the run, and Adi pulling up in the rear. I'm like, I'm like a mile and a half back trying to yeah, catch because, up. Well, well, no, because I wanted to give you a shout because you came on the run, and we all did a picture, but you were nowhere near, and I'm like, and, and Adi bringing up the rear. Oh, but um, no, I mean, I get off the plane, want to go for a run, as I said earlier, and um, Adi's like, oh, I'm going for a run. Yeah, I'll come, and I'm like, in my mind, I'm like. Yeah, I'm, I'm fighting for a world title fight next week. And, yeah. you well, know, that's right. No about, disrespect. Like, how fast do you run, though? Oh, I mean, you're went, fucking. Yeah, we were yeah, fucking yeah, flying in the end. Half, three and a half Is miles of flying. I mean, you know, I did my three miles, but I definitely got smoked. And, and it was just. Uh, well, it's know. not a race. I told, I told him, I was like, look, you're fucking fighting for a world title. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just I, I, I text. Just start, I, I was like. starting my fitness. I was like, sorry, bro. I got to, yeah. you know. You shouldn't even try to kill. 80% of your max heart rate is not 80% of his max heart rate. So it doesn't, you know. He's fucking. You're going to kill your friend. <laughs> then what's going to happen? Then you and Connor are going to have to fight the actual true number one contenders. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're not going to have Audi there to fucking pull the uh, the strings behind closed doors. Um, there's no strings being pulled. <laughs> I'm telling you. What, what is this? What is this? Uh, coffee? coffee? Steroids. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, I'm, we, hey, we dosed you with steroids. Hey, hey, you're this, it's very strong. Oh. This New York Commission, man, you got to be careful. We're not even. <laughs> we're not even allowed to take ibuprofen. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Tylenol. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Weird. So we can't take ibuprofen. Yeah. Certainly can't ingest weed mm. if uh, other people are smoking it in the room. Whoever that. We might, didn't might smoke be. it in the room. We did not do it this time. I could smell it so badly <laughs> yeah. when you came back in. Um, Perillo's baked right now. Look at Perillo. No, I know. I've never seen Brady and Jason so quiet in my life. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. yeah. I, well, I said when we went to go smoke, I was like, I was like, who can take bigger rips, uh, striker or grappler? Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Is that what you did? Turns out hey, hey, look, neither guys, one of them. Let's not go down a weed topic conversation. You can't. Help yourself, Lewis. I know you're an addict. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I got nothing else. Yeah, I know. I tell you what, from going from 320 pounds to what, what you are right now, and you're what do you weigh right now? 205. Good. 205. That's really good. So, so, what happens when you get should, the munchies? I mean, I just eat, uh, you know, you have less, cheese, like, kale. And meat, celery, and carrots around. Cheese and meat, dude. See, the good news is... Jeez, uh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the last couple of weeks, I had uh, Dean Amasinghe. We spoke to him last week, and he's a vegan, uh, staying with me. So I've never eaten as many vegetables and stuff in my life, but it is good for you. It's really good. I know it's crazy, but I, I really did feel the energy levels. I, I felt so much better, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah, every meal was like... And we were having all this stuff for, like, to probiotics and stuff. We were having... Um, Lots of sauerkraut and all kinds of stuff. People say, oh, it's good for your gut. The only thing he named was sauerkraut. I was like, this sounds awful. No, no, no. Sauerkraut, Did you have kimchi, a hot dog to put it on? Uh, um, all kind, no, no, no. Just hot dogs, squirting mustard into your mouth? <laughs> Chickpeas, kale, all kinds of stuff. It was great. Lots and lots of vegetables with a tiny little bit of chicken on the side. And believe it or not. Believe was, you me. Believe you I me. I was eating the vegetables and not so much the chicken. Which is surprising. The yeah. sick, is this, could yeah, this be a new lifestyle for Michael Bisping? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say yes, but the moment I can have a slice of pepperoni pizza, That's it. that motherfucker's down. going down my is neck. Is that the thing, like, <laughs> it, it, you know, w- w- what's the one thing you're going to fucking well, eat? So here's the you're thing. in New York, right? So, so, here, so, here, so here's the thing. Typically after a fight, and Brady is the guy that normally goes and does this, on a Friday morning, he goes off. Obviously, we have the weigh well, it's a little different now because we have the weigh-ins nice and early on a Friday morning, and then Friday afternoon we have the ceremonial weigh-in. But what used to happen is, of course, you know, we make weight probably at nine, ten o'clock in the morning, and I have to hang around all day on weight, and you're dying. So um, Brady goes off to the store for me. Sometimes Jason would go, whoever goes, and uh, I'd say right. And this, here's what he come back with: at my request, grapes, 
sandwiches, a bowl of pasta, maybe some Snickers bars, some Mars bars, some chocolate milk. What else, Brady? What else? Some type of juice, muscle milk. Yeah, muscle milk. Uh, uh, on the spot. Uh, <laughs> 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 Ensures, repl- carb yeah. shakes. Just, just fucking anything and everything. Because he likes the pasta. He yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just in case I want it, I want it there in the bag. And then they come back, they put it in the big bag. They fill the bag with ice because I want it all cold. And then immediately at the weigh-in, on the scale, I'll drink a Pedialyte. And then I'll drink a water. And then I'll like, have a bit of pasta or something. And then I'll go for a Snickers bar. And in my, oh, I always have a chocolate milk because I'm thinking the carbs and this and that and everything and then after that we'll go back to the hotel and I'll have some room service ordered prior to me being there to be there at a certain time normally a pizza because I'm thinking carb up carb up carb up and then I'll have a little nap and then we'll go to an Italian restaurant and of course there are lots of pasta and pizza and garlic bread and I think fuck it I'll have a dessert and this that and then I go back and I gotta take the biggest shit you've ever fucking (laughs) dreamed of but and then the next day on the Saturday I'm super strict right I eat well and I and I'm telling Dean, this that the, the, he's a performance coach who knows a lot about nutrition and stuff. And he was almost having a heart attack <laughs> as I was telling. He's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe that's what you do." I'm like, "Well, I always feel great." He's like, "Mike, no, it's going to be very, very different this time." So he said, no "You know, way. yeah, fuck no, it's not going to be different. You can go fuck hey, Dean, Go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Why? You were not but changing your fucking goddamn fuel." Did you just not go to... I saw you go to war off uh, fucking pizza and fucking garlic bread with Anderson motherfucking Silva well, kick his fucking say, ass well, you know for five fucking rounds. Yeah, but, he, he, but, fucking but he's of the... Uh, he's, he's, he's right from a sports science and a nutritional yes, standpoint. Yes, yes. But you've been doing it for so long to change it now. The question is... I eat healthy. Hey, it's the fuck with your psychology. It's like you have a specific no, he, way of he's doing it. Say, he, he's saying on the Friday night, and by fucking the way... fuck man. No, no. Fuck fr- on the, <laughs> uh, by, the, by, by the way... Fuck you, dude. No, I'm stop. Kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, kidding, I'm hey, wait, I'm let's all not... Hey, I'm let's not turn into a witch hunt on Dean and Mazinga. Fuck you, Dean, and fuck your vegan lifestyle, you pussy. We're coming for you. You and vegetables. Go shove some broccoli up your ass, Dean. Yeah, you know he wants to. He wants to take a carrot and shove it right into his ass. Instead of wearing the whole God damn it. Now you got me woke up, Dean, you motherfucker. <laughs> you did not bring vegan lifestyle to Michael Brisbane. Great steak, motherfucker. <laughs> all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bread meat all day, oh, bitch. I love you, Dean. Hey, no, 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 no. Let's not turn this into a witch hunt on Dean Amazinga. He's a professional, and this is how he makes his living. He'll love this song. He, he's, he's, yeah, no, of course. He's actually in uh, uh, Portugal right now with the England rugby team. But what he wants to do is he's saying rather than an Italian, we should go to either a Greek or a Mexican restaurant because instead of pasta, we should be getting the carbs from rice and things like that. I don't know about Tell that, Tell that Jay. to Anderson Silva after he got his ass kicked when you were eating fucking garlic <laughs> bread and fucking garlic nuts and fucking That was a good Italian pasta restaurant in London, fucking, in, in yeah, London yeah. too, right? But wait a minute, what you happens? You could have five more rounds. You could have no, won no, five no, more no, rounds that you, you go back in time, no, if he so, would have so, just so. eaten rice instead, he fucking yeah. knocked out Anderson in six seconds. No, no, but shit. <laughs> it was the pizza. So, so listen, so listen. No, no, hold on, hold on. So his, 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 um, his theory, of course, and he's right, he says... We've been disciplined for so long. What's one extra day? It's true. It, it, it is true. It is mm. true. You know. So I'll still have some things that make me feel good and, and things that I'm craving. But for the most part, I am going to try and follow what he says. Your stomach doesn't hurt like the next day. Like, cause here's the thing: I, no, I diet like no, crazy. It I do it like you know. I'm, I'm doing like keto dieting right now. We're doing this cruise next week. I'm trying to fucking just have abs when I go. And you know, my, I'm bringing my girlfriend on the cruise too. So you're in love, by the way. Your abs or what? I see how in love you are, man. Oh, yeah, I, I follow you there on the Instagram. And so, yeah, someone yeah. just there's fired, quite yeah. a lot of. Are you, it's like you have a fart. Smell it's got to be Audi. It's Audi. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's just squeezing the one. Oh, he's like, stop throwing me under a goddamn bus. First of all, that's why Audi was sixty. That's why Audi was sixty feet behind guys, you guys. Guys, let's try and keep. I, I know I said. Oh, you're the one that brought it. But let's not make it about farts. Let's just try and raise the bar on the intelligence level a little bit, okay? Um, so tell us about the cruise, Lewis. Oh no, I. Uh, well, no, that's the thing. I diet like crazy. Who's this? Oh, this is my girlfriend. Oh, he's in love. Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Mike's just pulling up pictures Mike's in real time. Mike's she's a comedian as well. Yeah, she's a comic as well. So we're going on this oh, cruise is, together. Yes. So we, but we're long distance. So we. Where I diet she, like she? she lives in LA. Okay. 
So we diet like crazy. We're not with each other, and then we link up and we just eat and fuck and like. So the first day it's great. <laughs> Tell but jokes. By day two or day Tell three, jokes. I've been eating so bad. Yeah, I thought it was great. You joke better. We're gonna love it. You got the worst. No, part. no, it doesn't work, Lewis. Yeah. You need to change the punchline. Yeah. You got the worst part. Keto shit diet. By day three or what? <laughs> yeah, by day three, I'm just I have to hold in shit while we fuck the whole time. <laughs> literally, my asshole feels like it has to like it's about to let out like diarrhea. So, but that's what I'm saying though. It's like when you what? eat that bad. This is the most disjointed episode of this podcast we've ever had. We've, we haven't shit? actually wait, 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 discussed happened? any topic in any kind of detail. Listen Anybody to listening to this, yes, they may be laughing, but they're not this, learning this anything. I sometimes... If somebody listens teach. to this podcast to learn something, they should fucking kill themselves. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> if you use this for any educational purposes ever, put a fucking bullet in your head right now. You don't deserve to be alive. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, I want to. I want to talk about um, last night's fights. Fights last night. Okay, all right. I'll pretend I care. I do a little bit. So it's I good. watched the main event and co-main. Event. I watched That's the main and co-main as well, and I watched a couple of others actually. Um, so I'm talk gonna, about talk my, about my drink just spilled everywhere. Can I give this to someone to get rid of? Talk about the main event. All right, so you're, Machida, it's your weight class. I mean, Machida comes back year and a half layoff, suspension after uh, Usada. Uh, what did he get caught for? It was well, steroids, or uh, it was a steroid that he said to Usada when Usada came to his house to test him. He said, "Oh, by the way, I've been using this supplement," and he went, "Oh, really? Well, that has X Y Z steroid in it. Therefore, you're going to be banned for a year or two years. I think it was a year. Now, by the way, I think that's a very convenient way of." Um, Admitting that you took steroids. This is his actual um, statement from a year ago. I received a suspension from USADA with my head up held, held up high. Even though I don't agree with it, I reiterate that I've never had any problem in all my career and I've always collaborated with USADA. I hope the fact that I had spontaneously declared which substance I ingested would have been taken into consideration. Spontaneously declared. That's like, oh, you got me. Okay, <laughs> take it easy on me. I am spontaneously declaring that I took steroids. But I happen to know that it's in this over-the-counter medication that I bought. Now, listen, call me a cynic, but you have that excuse in your back pocket if you saw to show up in a time where you're going to test positive. Anyway, I don't want to kick a man while he's down. And when I say down, I mean knock the fuck out last night in the main event on Fox. Because <laughs> I don't. Because Mashida, you know, other than that little... Uh, indiscretion that uh, is a nice guy and he's a class act and you know he's a good martial artist so I, I don't want to you know I, I I don't let's forget about that he served his punishment whatever that that's in the past he came back um, there was a lot of talk online that he was looking a little smaller I don't know if you, don't know if you saw that they were showing um, Wayne pictures from his last fight to Wayne pictures oh let me see fight. that pull that up I want to see the and, Wayne and pictures it was a little different he looked yeah. he looked a little thicker in the past. Um, but I, I wasn't sure who I wanted to win because obviously I'm never a fan of people that get caught taking steroids. Right. I, I believe they have no place in this sport. That said, Derek Brunson was talking some shit about me fighting George St. Pierre recently. So I was Ooh. like, oh, I was like, oh, well, I hope fucking Machida knocks him out. I hope he karate kicks him in the face. Um, obviously, that's not the way it went down. And realistically, when I was watching it last night, I wasn't sure which way I wanted it to go. I mean, to be honest, made the best man win. And uh, that turned out to be Derek Brunson. I mean, Brunson was doing what he does. He's very, very uh, haphazard in the way he fights. He rushes forward, he chases after his opponents, and he swings like a madman. Now, if he connects with you, you've got problems because he's a big, strong, powerful guy. Uh, but Robert Whittaker, for example, saw him coming in and boom. Robert Whittaker knocked him out, right, if I'm not mistaken? I think so. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. So anyway... Mm -hmm. He's not, he's not the most pretty, you know, he's not technical, but he's a big, powerful dude. Uh, and, and, and he connected with that left hook, followed it up, knocked out Machida. So, yeah, brutal, you know, brutal ground and pound, like flat out. The referee should have stopped that sooner as oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. There, there was two or three shots on the end when he was out cold. Um, so, I mean, Machida's in a tricky place now. He's 39, just got knocked out cold after coming back from a USADA suspension. I mean... You know, he's not going to be looking at any title fights. That's for damn sure. But there's also something to be said about who you lose to. Because it's not like Brunson. Brunson's only lost to the best of the best in, in the weight class. He lost Anderson Silva, a close decision. Uh, got knocked out by Robert Whitaker, who now is the interim champion. Got a loss and back. Yoel. Yeah, Yoel in 2014. And that's about it, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that that's it in, like, recent history. A couple losses earlier to Jacare and to Kendall Grove. Um, but, you know, he's a dude who, where, Kendall you know. Kendall Grove. Your boy Kendall. Shout out to Spider Grove. There you go. That's Kendall. Spider. Um, but yeah, we do. Look at this. Look at this fucking. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think look, Machida is obviously a, a legend in the game. I think he still he has a big enough heavy name heavy. down in Brazil. I think Fuck, I think if he chooses to want to continue to compete, it's it's a personal decision for him and his family. That he still has a market in Brazil. Yeah. Is he gonna headline pay per view cards? Is he gonna fight for a title? As Michael Cutt said, I, I don't think so unless he goes on a tear. Daniel and Cormier three or four times in, in a year, you know. Daniel Cormier uh, said it during the uh, the broadcast. He was like, "I've never heard this many people be this quiet," because that the crowd was just like fucking whoosh. shocked. That was it. Complete yeah. shock. They had just watched Damian Maya lose. Lo- lose a fight, and even I'll say, even at the end of that fight, I thought that could have been stopped. Uh, hey, Damian hey. Maya was getting lit the fuck up at the end of that fight. Well, exactly. And here's what we should talk about. Here's what we should talk about. Fucking, um, that should be in your little fucking notes there, Louis. Maybe it is. Uh, but it's not because I've I looked. Hope it is. Uh, it's not because I've looked. <sighs> Uh, Colby Covington, whoever is that his name? Covington, yep. Covington, Cuntington, whatever his name is, because I don't like him because he talked some shit about me mm-hmm. a while ago. But still, he beat Damian Meyer in a better fashion than what Tyron Woodley did. He did. Tyron Woodley bored everyone to tears when he fought Damian Meyer, uh, just like he does every time he opens his goddamn fucking mouth. Uh, so. Um, you're not taking me on here at all. You're supposed to dive in and interject and like keep the conversation. No, no, because I'm waiting for you to say the thing that I'm positive is in the notes. You piece of shit. <laughs> Talking about his <laughs> post fight speech. <laughs> his post fight speech. Well, what is in the notes? His post fight speech. Covington's post fight speech. No, no, no. Well, the post fight speech was great. I mean, listen, he got a lot of stick on Fox. A lot of people saying. I was actually. Show, I thought we, he was gonna have to get escorted to the airport. Oh, dude. Yeah, well, apparently yeah, people were I, already like throwing oh, shit at him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But still, listening. You want to go and make some noise and get your title shot on this yeah. and that. I mean, come on. Man, yeah. pull it up, I mean, pull up the post on the, on the big hell, screen. But still, I thought it, you know, I mean, I'm not a fan of the guy because he was talking shit. But now, hey, that, now it, that you're in studio, but we can actually play it for the fans to hear too. We have amazing, the audio. There amazing. we go. All right, do it. Let's Get, go. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, after three this. rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard for a decision. It's crazy. The judges score the contest 29 27, 30 27, and 30 26 for the winner by unanimous decision, Colby K. Here we go. He already knew that he had won. I mean, he, he had he basically dominated. I mean, we'll, we'll get into hey, the fight with you in a minute. Yeah, don't ever do that with the, the waist thing. He, he's you making look, a symbol for Kobe give me a title Covington. shot. You, you just look like a for dick. Damian Maya. You got Damian Maya. Why did you ask for this fight? And did it go as you expected it to? I should have knocked him out. Brazil, you're a dog. All you filthy animals suck. I got <laughs> oh, one my God. <laughs> Hold on, let's listen to that one more time. What did he say? Hey, well, well, if you all just shut the fuck up for a second. Oh my god. Listen, listen, listen. You knocked him out. Brazil, you're a dog. All you filthy animals suck. I got one thing to say. Tyrell Woodley, I'm coming for you. If you don't answer the front door, I'm going to knock in and I'm going to take what's mine. Oh god, that's brilliant. Brazil, you're a dump. You're you're all you people are filthy animals. animals. Yes. yes. I mean, listen, I, you know, signing off from that, I thought Brazil was very nice when I went there. Yeah, he's still going, but... Um, he's pushing the, the, the trend. Yeah, but anyway, but... but um, no, obviously you're not signing off. Here's what he said, because he defended his no, comments. No, no, but listen, but listen. Oh, you, that I, is a way to, to get headlines. I mean, I mean, a lot of people waste their opportunity on the microphone afterwards. They they come out with something vanilla. They say, oh, whoever the UFC want to give me. I mean, that's a way to ask for a title shot. Listen, Brazil <laughs> are going to want to see that guy lose his head. Yeah. Boom out of here, or whatever the fuck it is they all chant, which is annoying as hell. But they're definitely going to want to say like, that for it sure. sounds like they're saying, whoop. There it is. <laughs> but, there it is. Um, but, I mean, fair play to him. He made some noise, but we're talking about it now. I mean, will he get a title shot? I don't know. But he did a better job against Maya than what Tyron Woodley did. And it was a way more entertaining fight. Now, was it a good fight? Was it uh, uh, skillful? No. It was, he didn't it, do it, a better job, though. In reality, if you look at what happened there, right? And uh, I hate to disagree with you. Okay, champion. no, no, no. He had a Tyron way more entertaining fight. And more entertaining, yes. Tyron walked out without really being touched. Tyron yeah, yeah, but 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 he didn't get taken GSP down fight. either. He didn't get taken down either, which which uh, yeah. which Woodley made a big thing out of. Oh man, you know I defended twenty one takedowns, man. Right? <laughs> what well, so did Col- Colby Covington? Yeah, so uh, Colby hey. Covington's inappropriate insults towards Brazil under review by the UFC's court. Oh, of- come on, who cares? Well, you can't so what, what, listen. How did he defend his? He uh, defended it by saying what? he's like, look, dude, I'm trying to sell a fight. These people are threatening my life, throwing <laughs> bottles at my head, telling me they want me to fucking die. He was like, I'm going out when a microphone's in my face and a camera's. 
on me selling the next fight. He was like, this is what I'm supposed to do. He was very, he actually made hey, a great listen, point. Hey, listen, listen. No, no, no. The, the UFC called a come to that. I don't see how that can come Brad into though. effect. You, know, you and I both know that that. that no, I know, but still, you're job. allowed your opinion. You sure, can say but, this. I, th- I but, think but, but, Brazil's a dump. Right, but. But but <laughs> while, or, or, while or Brazil, I think Brazil, that you all suck. But while right? you're, but listen, while um, you're by the Brazil, way, I'm I'm being Colby Covington there. You can say that while like, you're in Brazil representing the UFC. He didn't say I think. While you're though. in Brazil representing the UFC, he called them animals. They, they have a right to say how you, they want you to represent them or not. I mean, that's that's a fair. Position yeah, but yeah, but but but, but, but I hey, 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 what he hey, hey, because he's right. Th- this, he's right. This is they are threatening his life. This they is are just, throwing, throwing shit at him. So I can understand Phil hostile oh, and talking. Yeah, shit. but this is just for the sake of debate and for the of sake course. of the argument. Okay. But but he's not doing anything wrong. He's allowed to say, "Listen, I didn't have." In essence, what he's saying is, "I, I haven't had a good time here. You haven't been very welcoming of me." That's not what he said. And you can all go <laughs> fuck yourself. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how. That's he, a translation. I don't know how he yeah, you're good translation. No, no, no. But yeah. but that's yeah. what it's through the Michael I've had a very unpleasant. <laughs> later. I've had a very unpleasant time. It was very unpleasant. If you go through the the count the counts translator, oh. it's fucking go fuck yourself. I hope your mother dies. Is I would rather not eat at this restaurant again. <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand there's a translation there. No, no, but no, but, but listen, but you know, all right, words to that effect. Were, were, <laughs> was it choice language? Was it a little stronger? Yeah, for sure, but realistically, I mean, what did the UFC want? Did they want a bunch of drones? They're yeah. just going to go out there and have no personality? I mean, this is the real world. I mean, people that fight like we do, you know, you're going to get certain people, you're going to get people from every level of society. And Corby Covington, obviously, is, is you know, um, I'm not trying to big him up. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but obviously he's a rough bastard. You know, yeah. he's obviously someone that, that 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 maybe if shit goes down for real, you might want in your corner. And if you want people to step into a cage and fight for a living and fight their ass off, that's the type of person you're gonna get. So you can't fucking you gotta take the rough with the smooth. Yeah, I think. Right. Yeah, Audie, you're uh, your manager. This yeah. Colby Covington is your client. He fucking goes out and says that. Or, does your head explode? Go off, oh, fuck, dude. Well, Here I we mean, go. I think you definitely go because you want a Reebok you, sponsorship. You, well, you want, the, and that's the thing. not well, gonna I'll, get you I'll, those I'll, things. And, and also, I mean, you, you, if you have Brazilian... By the way, Brazilian I wasn't condoning clients. what he said. Oh, yeah, I wasn't yeah, condoning we're, we're, it. For the sake of debate. No, right? we all, yeah, we all, yeah, we all have that. it on recording, Mike. But, we all know but, what you said. <laughs> 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 you heard the Bisping translation. <laughs> <laughs> but but if he's if he's my client, you go into crisis management mode. You're, you're concerned not only about his own image, you're concerned about a potential kind of uh, uh, violation that the UFC may try to bring against him for code of conduct violations. Well, or, he ain't or, fighting or in Brazil anytime and, soon. That's here, for damn here's, sure. Here's, here's the reality of it. I was at, I would be worried for his life because yeah. the reality is when you saw him. Because Brazilians are animals, arena, and who knows well, what they're gonna do. Well, and, and look, oh but but, to, but at the same time, I would also understand his emotions because where he's coming from is is feeling like he's in a hostile yeah, yeah. hostile place. Would he's you ask still, him to apologize? I think. Look, I would say you have to be sincere and explain. He yourself. apologized, by the way. Yeah, I, I have his apology. And, and let me tell Play you, his apology. I, I want to hear. I read his apology, and I thought that was actually very witty, very intelligent. And he did separate the separate people from Sao Paulo. This is what Colby that, says. That was no, no, no. between them and filthy animals. But I, I went to work last week. I was screamed at, spit at, assaulted with water bottles and other objects by an angry mob, and serenaded by ten thousand voices yelling, "You are going to die." My employer had a, had to play security at my hotel room to protect me. I would like to formally apologize to any filthy animal I offended by comparing them to my hosts in Sao Paulo. I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> That's I fantastic. That was brilliant. I thought that, that was brilliant. is and, awesome. And, and, and you know, and, they, and and the fact that he actually went and explained it and explained part of the fight game, but also realize that, hey, I, I shouldn't have put a blanket uh, word to, to describe everybody from Sao Paulo or everybody from Brazil, but still be witty about it and have a sense of humor yeah. about it and also sell himself in the next fight. So I of thought course. that was brilliant by him. And honestly, you, the, the fight, I, I think you everyone can't be good guys. I mean, we are fans of the drama. We're fans of, um, you know, even as just like a regular... If you're a person watching television, there needs to be some sort of conflict on a TV show. If everyone's just holding hands, running through the fields, and everyone's cool, there's just no, people there's nothing like interesting villains. Look, I have, yeah, a fi- I have a five-year-old now that watches the show The Descendants. It's a new Disney thing where they're actually making characters off the the good and the bad characters that we all grew up to. So Ursula has a daughter named Uma. Oh, shut and up! My daughter, my daughter, is pl- my daughter what, wanted to be a villain. Ursula, what is this? My, Ursula from Little the Sea Witch. I know. And she had a daughter named Uma, and that's who my daughter. What wanted are we to be. talking she about now? 
a villain. She wanted to be a villain for Halloween. So people do tune in to watch not only the heroes and people they like, but also people that just can't stand. That's yeah. just the reality of, yeah. of entertainment. That's it. It is. Michael Bisping. Why are you looking at me? He's the one talking about Little Mermaid. <laughs> and then when it ends, you look at me like I've got something to interject with. I got nothing on that. All right? I, I took that moment to drink my water. Uh, and drink it, I will. Uma, the daughter of Ursula. She's Uma. black. Ursula wasn't black. Ursula was like blue. She, yeah, but it's uh, 2017. Want, you know? She's gay black. Yeah, she's whatever. She's she's transgendered. You know, yeah, she's transgendered. Those weren't those weren't uh, those weren't tentacles. Those were eight penises that she had surgically implanted <laughs> below her. Thank God, my daughter. Oh God. To the show. There they are. Look, there's yeah, your yeah. penises. Jesus. Well, she's a beautiful woman. No, she is. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. This is a beautiful transgendered woman right there. I would marry that woman. All right, all right, all right. Let's so, move it on. So, uh, real anyway. quick, let's talk. Uh, uh, let's do, let's talk about uh, our sponsors really quick because we have to we have to do some ad reads right here. All right, well, let's do Gotta it. Gotta pay the motherfucking bills. Um, Thrive Market, brand new sponsor, Mike. We've been using them for a couple weeks now. No, I know. I love them. They are great. They're fantastic. I mean, Thrive Market really has everything you would normally get at a green grocer, except, and this is the good news, of course, in this modern age, you've got to be aware of it. It's all organic, non-GMO, paleo-friendly, and it's all at a discount, so you can live like you're going to Whole Foods at Target prices. You know what I mean? Not bad. They cut out the middleman so you get the stuff you want, the stuff you need, without paying the light bill of some bougie supermarket. Try it today and get $60 off free organic groceries, plus free shipping and free 30-day trial. You can get that offer at thrivemarket.com forward slash believe. Thrive, T-H-R-I-V-E, market.com forward slash believe. They this is the thing everything. that I... My son loves yogurt. I'm getting him organic non-GMO yogurt. Yogurt, and I say, Michael, it's Michael, yogurt. No, you're, you're we say yogurt. This is supposed to be like a, a time where we s- <laughs> tell a personal story. Like this is like oh, a for oh, example. Oh. For example, <laughs> my son. Hey, hey, hey. Well, why not? Well, why not? Have for example written there. You hand me a fucking ad read. I read it. That was a diamond read. I mean, hey, hey. By the way, my son does love yogurt. He eats it every morning. Does he? Does he? Yeah. But now I can get him non-GMO yogurt. Non-GMO from yogurt. ThriveMarket.com. When, when you put your son in the fight against Cody Garbrandt and T.J. Dillashaw. You're gonna have to... hey, hey, do you think there'll be any shit talking from that at the press conference this week? From Co- I guarantee the first questions. Well, not the well, first question. Someone's going to ask about it. Good. I hope there's, they do. No I hope what if they, they jump your son, both of them, <laughs> to prove a point? Do you know, what? every time, every time I have an argument, or not an argument, every time I have an issue with like a fighter or someone says something, I always say, "Listen, my son could beat them." Up. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't realize Poor is that I've got uh, yeah, yeah. In harm's way. there's a big line of MMA fighters <laughs> wanting to beat my son up just to prove a point. <laughs> so I'm sorry, Callum. Yeah. So l- listen, okay, they got it, it. Truly is great, dude. Shopping online is the is the new thing to do, and being able to get healthy food at your fingertips, delivered directly to your door, it makes everything so much easier. Especially if you're not in a big city. We live in New York and LA, so there's a lot of health food stores. There's a lot of whole places like Whole Food. There's a lot of uh, a places that are very health conscious. A lot of pla- other places in the country, it's not that easy. This makes it super easy to eat healthy. Whether you got a raw diet, a vegan diet, a paleo diet. Look, motherfuckers, I lost over. 100 pounds, and it's by eating low carb, low sugar. You guys can do a diet like that super easily by joining Thrive Market. Uh, every with every sign up, they give a membership to veterans or low income families in need. That's an extra. But that's thing. good. That's, that's great. Cool. That's incredible. I, 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 that's I really mean, good. the good thing is as well. I mean, it, it's all well and good trying to lose weight and be in shape, but you want to be healthy as well. And the organic and non GMO thing that is a big thing, and that's a big thing in our house right now. We're trying to make sure we, you know, eradicate all that bullshit, all those chemicals, because we want to live a long life. I mean, these days, the amount of bullshit that's in food is unbelievable. So if you go to Thrive Market, you know that none of that's in there. As I say, it's all organic and non GMO. ThriveMarket.com forward slash believe. And that is the promo code. Yeah, 60 bucks for your organic groceries, free shipping, free 30-day trial. Holy shit. Michael Bisping is just giving things away. What is it, Christmas? I thought it was Halloween time. I'm a very giving person. You're very giving. <laughs> Everyone knows that about you. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, uh, BetDSI. BetDSI.com. Did you have the pick wrong? Did you pick Machida this past weekend? I don't know. Or you, now you don't know. He always remembers. Yeah, I right, know, I know, I know. He's right and remembers every time. I did pick Machida. You did. Because Brunson can kiss my ass. Yeah. <laughs> but you were picking you were picking with your heart, not your head. Yes, I was picking emotionally. I wanted him to get knocked out because Brunson can kiss my ass. That's true. Well, here's the thing. I'm not making picks anymore. Well, I'm not making a pick no, for no. this fight. 
Because it's your if fight and you I have a you used your free $25 for registering at BetDSI.com and you lost based upon my pick, just remind yourself that it was a free $25 for registering at BetDSI.com. So really, I didn't cost you $25. I just stopped you from um, you making... Gave, you gave them an experience. I gave them an experience. But what you could do is re-register with a slightly different username and get your free $25 <laughs> again. I bet on me, I get his GSP. So go to BetDSI.com, use the promo code ME25, use a new register name. Or what and if uh, everybody that does it promises to give you 20% of the winnings, you throw the fight against GSP, have them bet on GSP. Call me or drop a contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. But, uh, no, but seriously, if you do want to make some money, put it on me, because this weekend I will be beating uh, George St. Pierre. So BetDSI.com has been in business for over 25 years, 20 years, A-plus rated on sports, but review size, easy to use mobile playing interface, and they have odds on everything. For example, you could even bet on... Uh, TV shows. You could, you could bet on fucking uh, like new, uh, news events, politics. We could bet on... If you're going to continue to bust my balls on my own fucking podcast, <laughs> you bet guys, on farted. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Audie, you Audie, Audie, you've been farting it's this whole time. Me. It's definitely it you. No, it no. definitely has been. He, look at this guy. He's sitting there like all quiet. Here, man. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but uh, so anyway. Go it's, to also, it's also not only the $25 for free, but we give you a 200% bonus on anything you do. Yeah, which is crazy. You know, so you, you put $100 on me, for example, this weekend, that will become $300. So go to, you know, it's crazy. BetDSI.com. You could get rich. I mean, I don't know what the odds on me are, but if you put 300 bucks on me, you'll definitely make some money. Uh, I don't know about being rich, but you'll you'll be able to take your wife out for a nice steak dinner at the very least. Yeah. So go to BetDSI.com. Use the promo code ME25, and you'll get $25 free, as I said, just for registering, and you'll get a 200% bonus match on your money. Do it. BetDSI.com. There you go. Let's get back into it. We're into it, Lewis. I never, it. I, I never got out of it. <laughs> That's true. What were it the is odds? true. What were, the, what were the odds? What were the odds? I don't know. What are the odds for me? But let's, let's talk about the I, entire fight card. Let's do some picks on the card. All right, 217. Let's, all right, let's go through it. Saturday night. Obviously. You got the fight card there? I got the uh, the main card here. Mike, Mike, pull up the entire fight card on the, uh, the big screen. Do we, do we need to go through the entire fight card? No, let's we'll do the big fights. All right. Masvidal gets his ass. If, I, hey, I, I'm looking forward to seeing that little shit George Masvidal this week. Yeah. I bump into him. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking stupid sideburns. What Wolverine looking motherfucker. You know what's fucked up? I liked George Masvidal. He talks shit about you nonstop. I know. And me. And now now he's got a fucking enemy in me. And he doesn't want an enemy in the Puerto Rican rattlesnake. <laughs> you're, you're a tough guy. I'll tell you right you're now. You're a bad man to piss off, Lewis. I'll tell you right now. Puerto Rican rattlesnake. Yeah. Hey, hey, I don't know what his problem is. I mean, maybe it's because I ripped up the Cuban flag <laughs> you know, and, and threw it at Yo Romero. I don't know. You know, even as we're talking before about the Brazilians freaking out about Kobe Covington and you, free, you know, the Cubans freaking out about you in this flag. Who really gives a fuck? Who has that much pride? I mean, it, who gives... Joel Romero did a video where he's literally dancing and burning the British flag. And listen, I am fiercely British and very, very patriotic. But at the same time, I didn't bat an eyelid over watching that. I actually thought it was a well-produced video. And yeah. I was like, yeah, props. That's actually pretty good. You called I his producers. You were like, I'm like um, Yeah, can I hire you for my next <laughs> one? Um, yeah, he's like, get over it, you prick. And listen, I was ringside for when Joel was fighting Whitaker. And he was gesturing me in between the rounds you know what I mean sticking his tongue out and pulling stupid faces so yeah. don't fucking provoke me especially when I've got a little tiny and it wasn't a Cuban flag it was a cocktail stick with a little tiny Cuban flag on it yeah. but it wasn't a Cuban flag you know I'm like you prick <laughs> ripped it and threw it at him yeah, but my point is, why? Who fucking cares? You could burn an American flag. You can, you can get, you can say, uh, fuck 116th Street in Harlem, which is my specific street, and I don't give a fuck. Why do people care about like these national things? It's only other countries. Well, you say that as a Puerto Rican, but I will say this: uh, I, I'm not sure if you speak for the majority of Americans there when you say that, because as an Englishman living in America, and now we're starting to have some kind of a real conversation. As an Englishman living in America, I mean, you guys are, and rightly so, by the way, fiercely patriotic and you know the flag and this and that I mean a lot of houses in my neighborhood they all have the fucking flags hanging outside the houses which gets on my tits I've that's say. not really being patriotic though like that's it's like being very fucking annoying is mm. what it is because I'm going to put a fucking union jack out there and say fuck you all yeah but nobody would care no they would though they'd be like oh you can't do that in America son 
I guess no, kind of. <laughs> Can't do that in America. <laughs> Can't do that in America. Everybody in your Melinda's fucking from fucking I know, like, out middle of the America. South <laughs> Michael he Bisping lives had, in a fucking beach he, community. He doesn't know how to do an Orange <laughs> County like surfer surfer accent. He just yeah, dude. You know, dude, dude man, get the you get that Union Jack down, bro. It's bougie, bro. You got to get get out of my country, live it or leave it in fucking Orange County. Get that shit down there, son. No, 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 but 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 there is a lot of flags. Floating around, and you guys are very fiercely patriotic. I mean, I'm looking at you, you're Puerto Rican. I'm looking at Otto, he's Iraqi. I'm kidding, Jason. you but you don't care, Brady. I don't really care. Brady, when I, say I'm, when Brady, I call myself the Puerto Rican rattlesnake, I am Brady. being very sarcastic. Are you very patriotic, Brady? <laughs> so, all right, very proud. Rick. Rick, you are. Yeah. Rick, take to the microphone and yeah, explain. Give him the microphone, explain. Mike. Listen, do we have any Trump supporters in the room? That, that's all we yes, need. Yes, to, to, yes. Uh, not, uh, oh, yeah, not myself, Jason. <laughs> but I don't want to get involved. Jason was a Trump supporter? Jason is. Here. We'll leave that here we go. That's another so show. Friends. It's another show. No, I don't support. I, I do it. Well, whatever. <laughs> yeah. We'll leave that there. <laughs> yeah. um, you got to support our president either way, no matter who. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's anyway, people do go. just say, there go you go. Go. he'll tweet, and people will be like, dude, I hope you die in a fucking fire. Like, that is the president. Jesus Christ, times have changed. Fuck me. You got it even in the previous administration, and it's really fucked up when you see that. Well, I'm in the proud of the country that we're in. You know, it's not always perfect, but get off your ass. But the thing is, listen. I mean, he seems to be dropping the ball a lot lately and saying a lot of incorrect things. So fair enough, I understand a lot of the backlash that he's receiving right now, but i got to say that that started the moment I mean, the backlash started immediately after him winning the presidency which, for me, which I find that kind of laughable, because the guy wins, and it's, it's, the, it's the system that you guys have in place, you all voted, he won at least give him a fucking chance alright, granted, is he acting like an asshole? Yeah, yeah he, is a, he is, and he's saying some dumb shit, but still, when he, when he was voted in, you got to get behind the guy It's a self-fulfilling okay, prophecy right. That's no, exactly, no, I mean, that's no, what, nobody's no, done it though Nobody should have done. He said, like, "Okay, well, all right, he won." Now, is is, uh, is uh, I'm not saying I agree with his shit. I'm saying, you know. It, well, you here's the thing. Up. Look, if, if I run a business, right, and then half of my company, let's say I'm the fucking CEO of this business, and half of my company is violently against me, the company's gonna fail. Period. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. not there's there's yeah, yeah, zero yeah. chance yeah. that that company that's, succeeds. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and so we and it's we've kind of, that's the problem with the system is and I don't want to get too political we should move on from it because the fucking yeah, MMA fans bullshit. hate when we get political but when you well, have because I've run out of ammunition when you <laughs> when you have well, that, a bipartisan system where you have half of the company you know vehemently against it you're gonna fail every time and this is why we really can't move any you know laws forward and this is why we're kind of stuck in this constant state of fucking you know hating each other and it feels like every, and now that everyone has a voice as well it becomes so apparent 15 years ago. People would just kind of say it at the dinner table, and now everyone's just fucking throwing their opinions out on social media every day. This so. all came from Yoel Romero kicking off about me ripping yeah. up the Cuban, Cuban say, dude, flag. You shouldn't have ripped up that flag. If you didn't I do know. that, we wouldn't this have to talk about politics. This is all my fault. So, George Masvidal is going to get beat off Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who happens to be another one of Audie's clients. Um, there we go. You got it. I'm excited for Wonderboy. I think he, he has to come out there, and he's ready to come out there and, and pull the trigger a lot more than he did in, in the Woodley rematch. I think he was not happy with his own performance. I know him and his dad, Ray Thompson, who's his coach as well, um, they're, they're planning on coming out there and being aggressive and, and setting the tone for this fight. So I, I don't expect this this fight to go to the ground. I, ex I expect that these guys are going to stand and, and throw. So it's going to be a, a very I, exciting fight to watch. I think Wonderboy's too big for him. I really do, because uh, Masvidal, you know, listen, uh, love him, hate him, whatever. He's had some good performances. He knocked out, what's his face, Cerrone recently. What was his last fight? Was that his last fight? I think it was. Was it? Maybe. I think so. But, 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 but yeah, yeah. But, but anyway, but he's competed at lightweight, Maya. and he's had some fights. Oh, it was Damian Meyer. Maya, that's right. Maya, that's right. Yeah. Prior to that, he knocked out Cerrone. I just think uh, Wonderboy, being the size he has been, the, the, the length of legs and the way he uses his legs, I just think it's a bad match for Masvidal. And I hope so, because as I said earlier, he can officially kiss my ass. Um, Do you remember when Masvidal, the first time I ever saw Masvidal was in one of those Kimbo Slice videos? Well, that's where he comes from. I think he has a documentary coming out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, like Miami, yeah, so. from the fucking hood. From, from I want to like him so bad, but then he had to call me a shitty comedian. Like did a he? Fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now wait, I, wait, wait, what did he say? Because Bisping, and he, I don't know, Bisping talks shit about him. I guess he picked against him. No, no, no. This all started. He's blaming it on like some Cuban loyalty. No, it's his little uh, narcissistic um, tendencies that, that started this. 
I politely said that I picked I picked Damian Maya to beat him. This been translator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this big translator. Oh, that's great. No, I did. I very politely. I broke it down. And I said uh, I thought Maya was a bad matchup for him. He actually surprised me in that fight. He did better against Maya than what I thought he would do. But ultimately, he still lost the fight. Uh, and then since then, he just went on a tirade of abuse. What did you write down there, Bisping translator? Yeah. Name of the show. Possibly. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Go with it. Possibly. But does that mean we get artwork before, like I'm one the... day before the next episode, oh, yeah. due to be? be Recorded. Yeah, we have other ideas, but we <laughs> you know, cannot share six them Six days the later, <laughs> three hours later, for anyone that watches SpongeBob. Um, so, all right, and then what? Young Jay check with Thug Rose? Yeah, Thug Rose. Is that Rose. the next one? No, there's one more really good fight, right? TJ Besides the call man? Oh, TJ and Cody, and then we got Thug Rose and uh, Young Jay check. Under the opening fight is. Um, Johnny Hendricks, Johnny Hendricks and, and Paolo. Wow. Baracinha. Baracinha. Okay. Right. But when you say you're a Baracinha, <laughs> uh, he's good. That Baracinha. He, he, he's he's good, man. He's exciting. He's exciting as hell. That could be a tough matchup for Johnny Hendricks. I, I've never seen him fight. Yeah, no. The dude Paul, is there it. a highlight reel for him? Pull it up. I'd love he to packs. See him. A lot of heat. He throws hard. He knocks people out. He's super aggressive. That's Usually, you'll see that when there's like a guy who's like a former champion, yeah, who's he, like a few, a few fights removed from being champion, and then they throw Johnny him up against Hendricks a guy. is going to have to bring back his wrestling for this one for sure. I don't think he needs to. He wants to stay stay on the feet with this guy. Definitely not. Barashinya hits hard, man. It, as long as this guy that I think it is, yeah, because. But a genius. He's never thrown a punch. Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think is the guy I'm talking about. Oh, he's a monster. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a good. monster. Um, can we get it on? Of course. Yeah, we'll see. If we yeah, can Johnny Hendricks is gonna have to bring back his wrestling. There's another guy I would have liked in this training camp. Johnny Hendricks. He would have been handy. Yeah. But Jason trained. <laughs> And this is another thing about GSP. See, GSP got his ass kicked of Johnny Hendricks. Let's be honest, he won the decision. But it was still a, it was a close fight, but at the end of it, he Judge looked a mess. Decision, he, he looked a mess at the end of it. And I, I said to Jason, I said, oh, what about Johnny Hendricks? And Jason said, duh, 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 over to you, Jay. You remember what he said? Because you had him in camp with BJ. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, he's been in camp with BJ a couple times. I, I, I put Johnny on the hand pads a handful of times. And I, I mean, I know Johnny well. He's a lot smaller guy than Michael. Oh, Benson. sorry, yeah. I'm not trying to put yeah. you on the spot to talk yeah, shit yeah. about Johnny yeah, Hendricks. I don't want like, to, yeah. You asshole. Yeah. No, no, no. He just said, listen, no. he's, he's, he's a naturally small. much, much smaller yeah. guy. He is naturally a lot You weren't saying guy. he's an asshole. He's a terrible not fighter. Nothing like that. He was just he's saying. strong, big, Think about Johnny, Mike. He said, he's, uh, I've taken him on the pads. He's a much, much smaller guy than yeah. you. Yeah. You know, so we got the highlight. The jo- but isn't Johnny? Uh, well, a lot of the, a lot of the guys, GSP, that's a, that's his big thing now. Here we go. Is being the bigger guy. Yeah, this is Paolo Porcinia knocking out. Uh, Paolo Wilabam goes there. Fuck me, dude. Hey, you know what? They pay the big whole, bucks on Fox. Hey, I will hey. never, until I get paid to learn these people's names, I will not say them correctly. Paolo Wilabam goes The Holy War Angel, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> That's his nickname. It's a good nickname. Yeah, really? This is, the, this is the 18-year-old kid from Brazil, correct? Yeah, yeah. So Paolo Porcinia is 18. So anyway, listen. Is he 21? I'm going to go with Johnny Hendricks in that fight. So yeah. go to uh, betdsi.com, use mm. promo code me 25 <laughs> Register, 25 bucks for free. 200% money on whatever you put down. Money match, whatever. Paulo, Paulo Barrochina to win, and I'll say by, via knockout. Wait, so Paulo to win over Johnny. Paulo to win, yeah, no yeah. offense, Johnny. Oh, look at it. This guy's fucking jacked. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit. No, he's all not 20. He's 26 years old. He's 26. Um, all natural, all natural. Undefeated, 10-0. and 0. He's got two fights in the UFC, but all never natural. fought anybody as... as what Mike? You want to say something? Never fought out of Brazil either. So. Never fought out of Brazil either. Oh, that, that, that's oh, that, that's convenient. Yeah, that's gonna make you know, Vito had never used to fight out of Brazil either when he was <laughs> fucking looking like. Paulo Villa. He looked like Paulo Villa <laughs> when he looked like the Incredible Hulk. Oh, sure. All right, so next fight: uh, Double J, Yuan and Jacek versus Rose Namajunas. Oh, to give me a pick. I'm eating cashews. Yeah, that's gonna be a good a good fight. I mean, oh, you say no off the air. You're going. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Sorry. Why? Do you rep? Do you rep one of them too? He he did. Yeah. Who's gonna win, Audi? Come on. Yeah. Look, Joanna's a good fighter. She's on on her feet. She's one of the best strikers. But honestly, Rose is deadly if she shows up with the right mental state. Right. I think she's still young. She's still developing her mental toughness. If if she's on point, I can see this going the distance and and you know. It's, Didn't you want to say that Rose is like, like out of her mind or something? She like qu- she was quoted at saying that she said something. Well, she said because Rose is um and 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 by the way, 
I apologize if I'm getting any parts of this story wrong. Because I thought you were going to apologize for spitting a nut directly into my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I literally That's thought he was going to see I apologize for spitting directly yeah. into no, no, your mouth no, 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 because no, no. whatever what about, I have, you have now. What I'm about to say is, you know, it, it's a very sensitive subject, I'm sure, to, to uh, Rose Namayunas, but I think her dad suffered from mental illness uh. and he killed, uh, committed suicide, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, JJ. Uh, it's very similar to the Rousey yeah. story, yeah. Um, so, Jan JJ on the conference call said that Rose is mentally unstable, Ooh. right? So, which, like, obviously. Ignited some bad blood and whatever, mm. and um, Rose actually handled it really well. You know, I can't remember what she said, but uh, Rose is cool. I've interviewed her yeah. before. Very cool yeah. chick, uh, like uh, down to earth, like also like kind but of. But as you can say, like see that that's close fight. to the bone for her to say you're mentally unstable when a dad can. And again, as I say, if I'm getting anything wrong, there, I apologize because you know. But was it a commentary on her dad? Was she, or maybe you well, no, was being, no, I don't think so. I think maybe she thought this bitch is a little wacky. Look, yeah. here's the thing. Anytime, the th- anytime a really beautiful girl shaves her head, there's something a little crazy about that. Like, I imagine her in the mirror well, just, like, like Britney crying. Spears. Yeah, yeah. Dude, crying, like, just shaving her head off or her hair yeah. off. I'm going to be champion. <laughs> 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 but th- that's kind of crazy in itself. So I, maybe there's something to that. But uh, yeah. you have to kind of be sensitive to that. Um, Ioana, though, Ioana's fucking... Yeah, but do you? No, no, but my point is that this is the thing in this world. You go out there and you say things. And you just, like, I do it all the time. I fucking I talk all the time and I say a lot of things. You don't know, and nobody's supposed to know, your life story. You know what I mean? So you can't go around the, you can't live your life being offended every time somebody says something when they don't know your history. Right. You know You know what I'm saying? So Part I, of the I, I, psychological warfare, right? Yeah, yeah well, well, I don't you think you're on I think it was just an innocent comment. And to be and to Nama Yunus's credit, I don't think she gave it any real life. It was more the people in the media that made a story out of it. My point is, though, just because, you know, there was... I mean, again, we've got to tread very carefully here because I don't want to be... You know, obviously, it's a very delicate subject. But what's another example? If someone's, I don't know... Uh, I don't know. Tito uh, and Chael. Chael in that press conference yeah, kind of crossed uh, the line. Or, with, uh, or let's say someone dies or someone had something bad happen in their life. You can't mention that again and you're expected to know what, what that is. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's the fight game. There is an element of psychological warfare. You have to know <laughs> that the opponent's trying to get under your skin and get you to react emotionally. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't mean yeah. that. I don't mean that. I mean just in the everyday life. Let's but, say but something it, happened to you, Ori. Just say, quit being so fucking sensitive. For better yeah, yeah. Hold, hold, hold on. Let, 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 what, what's something that bad that could have happened to you. Let's well, just mention. I lost my brother. In a, in right, but there you go. Right? So, and how and how did he die? In a similar fashion. I found. I came in. I found him hung. I was 15. He was 24. Oh shit! Oh so, fucking hell! Oh, I've, I've actually. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Out. Right? Jesus Christ, right. Mike! Really? Oh, right, right. No, yeah. no, no. no. Yeah. 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 If you don't mind someone, me, but I know people in the past. It, it, have, have tried, if, so if there, was, if there was like tension. So 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 here's the thing, right? If there was tension. And people, like, for example, or, or I'm from Baghdad, as you said, I'm Iraqi mm. during 9-11 when I played at UCLA. There was opponents that would try to, to, to get under my skin. No, They'd no, no. Oh, would, like, no, would, no, like, no, two of them on, stand up really tall on, next to each other on. and another one would crash into the other one? Hold on. No, but that's, no. not the point I'm, that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is so... <laughs> you dick. No, Audie, that's not the point I'm trying to make. What I'm trying to say is so, so, you know, it's, you, so you went through something yeah. obviously very traumatic. Yeah. And, and let's just say someone's just making a joke one day and they mention Hang something about somebody being hung. And and they make light of it and then you jump out and you go hey motherfucker you can't say that because my brother right so oh, well, hold on a minute well, I didn't I, know well, that well, well, yeah like if somebody well, said well, signing well, with well, what, audio- I tell, what I will tell you is in high school I remember someone right after it happened someone had made a joke about you know where's Odd? he must be hung up somewhere right and and it really really upset me at oh, the time up, yeah. and I was at, at, when I was younger I didn't know how to control my energy as much as I do now at the age of 37 having been through what I've been through in life and business but well, it takes were they doing that, that intentionally that, yeah, it was a fucking sarcastic yeah, no, joke. No, no, it was no, like, no, it, was, it was a very, in my opinion, it was a... Now, after the fact, after everybody ragged on him, after I, I gave him the silent treatment, I almost whooped his ass, but, no, you no, know, I, you, I, my, friends, my friends got on him, his friends got on him, he apologized. So, he yeah. came back and apologized because he realized it was... Tasteless. Now, in this situation, no, 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 for, no, for Rose no, and no, Juana, no, no, it's a battle. No, no, it's a cycle. There's no, no, a cycle you're not understanding the point that I'm making, though. What I'm saying is that obviously that guy was a fucking dick. He right. was an asshole, right. and, and you should have cracked him in the fucking face. Right. I would have done, especially at school when you can kind of get away with that. Yeah, no, um, that's why I used to get in trouble. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, no, w- w- what I'm saying is, if somebody just makes, you know, we'll call it uh, a classless joke or a 
they're joking bad taste, but yeah. they just make a remark not knowing your history or whoever's history or Rose's history. Yeah, like let's say somebody. I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, that's you know part, what I'm saying? I agree that with you. you have to deal part, with that. You have to learn how to deal with exactly, that a little and that, bit. And that's what you I see mean what by, I'm saying? So now, I you can't walk you around trying to look to be and offended that's, by and that's that. my point. You have to learn how to channel that energy the right way. And to your point, you're right. You can't feel sorry for yourself because nobody gives a fuck. At the end of the day, life goes on and the world keeps spinning with or without you. It's not that they don't give a fuck. Because I'm sure maybe if they did know the history and they did know that, they would give a fuck. Some, and, some and, would. And they'd tiptoe lightly and they wouldn't say that. Some it's would, just that some people wouldn't. talk like we're a bunch of guys now, we're talking and things get said and we all bust balls and you you say whatever. Mm. And then and then something gets said and you're like, hold on a minute, that triggers an emotional response within you. But they didn't know that. They didn't yeah. know your life history like these guys have just met you. Yeah. you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so no, I think no. that's what young Jacek was doing. She wasn't purposely trying to revoke um, uh, emotions of her dad committing but, but suicide. It wasn't actually like suicide. Apparently, Nami Yunus was a victim of sexual abuse earlier in her life, and her late father was schizophrenic who eventually had to leave the family. Mm. Um, so I guess he had to maybe be committed or something. Was that it? Okay, I so know. I got it utterly and completely so, wrong. So, yeah. so Michael Bisping is insensitive. So, and, uh, no, no, Bisping translator. Michael Bisping translator. Bisping translator. Uh, <laughs> Bisping no, translator. But, but, but to your point, like, look, whether Joanna meant, meant it as a, as a dig or Fuck not. Fuck it, let's just say she what, meant it. She's what, a bitch. But, 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 okay, so <laughs> How even, dare you? Even if you meant it. If it sells five more pages, that's five bucks for me. Let's go. You asked me who I picked, right? <laughs> yeah. And Mike and Mike said that Rose handled it. She didn't even give it any credence. She didn't even let it bother her. And that's what I was saying earlier. If she shows up with the right with the right me- mental and the state of mind, right? I think she's gonna give Joanna a run for her money, and it's yeah. gonna be a great fight. Rose had that crazy flying arm bar back in the day. Remember that? Like yeah. uh, an Invicta. I don't she's, remember that. No, she, dude. Uh, what well, Jason was saying a few days ago because remember she got beat off uh, what was it, Carla Esparza. Back in the day on the yeah. Ultimate Fighter, she got beat by her. Um, oh, that's Jason, right. you were saying she was only 21 and she was a baby back then. And, you know, now she's mature, she's got better. Yeah, yeah this that is right there, the flying arm bar. Available in too. Yeah. Yeah. This is when Michelle she was... Michelle Watterson. She's, did, she's talented. I, I got Rose in that fight, actually, but, I mean... Yeah. I, and Joanne, I think, is one of the best fighters in the in the game, yeah. really. Her yeah. stand-up is fucking She's amazing. Well, that, I mean, I think if she had a little power, she'd be, she would be really amazing. <laughs> listen, so listen, we're, we're all here and we're breaking down fights, and I'm just glancing across the room. Really, at some point, we do need to get into the mind of Brady Fink because it, it's an exceptional <laughs> thing. It really is an exceptional oh, thing. Brady, special. you need to come and talk to Lewis for a little bit. Brady, come do, come do the last uh, few picks with us because we, we have to wrap up and, like, you know, I, I would say. Right, I'm gonna give you my mic, Jason. Brady. All right, switch your audio or whoever. I'll switch Come, on. Someone. Switch me. Go. Come on, Brady. Come on, Brady. Here Get involved. Go. You can't sit here the whole time and not be involved. Brady Fink joins the show. Me and Brady. Third Dan in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Fought in Pride back in the day. Thanks. <laughs> 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 bad motherfucker. Nah, thanks. <laughs> he loves talking about dicks. Yeah. He does. But, but hey, 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 hey. Hey, brow podcast, guys. Come on. So, all right. So, one real second. quick, the picks. Uh, I'm going to pick you, Anna. Hey, fuck you guys. Hey. <laughs> Audie's the man. Uh, Auditor, everyone. Paradigm Sports Management. So, so uh, look, I like you on in the fight. Bisping, who are you officially picking? For Nami Yunus and Jan Jacek? Yeah. Oh, God. I, I got to go with uh, Jan Jacek. I mean, to be honest, I mean, she's amazing. She really is. She just seems to get better and better. Uh, she's been fine at this high level for so long. Uh, she's used to the spotlight. I mean, fine at Madison Square Garden uh, is a big deal. Even mm. for me a long time ago, I'm like, yeah, yeah, no big deal. But as it gets closer and closer, it is a big deal. She's been there. She's fought there before. Uh, Nama Yunus is... Um, I think she's very mentally strong. But still, the the nerves and the pressure and all that thing does get to people. Uh Yon JJ has been there before. She's performing really well. She's training with a good team. I think Nama Yunus has the ability to beat her. I just, I'm going to pick Yon JJ simply because she's been at that higher level for so long. That's not to say she can't prove me wrong. At that point, Brady Fink, do you know, A, anything about these women, and B, even how to pronounce their last names? <laughs> Yeah, probably can't do the last names, but uh, I know a little bit about the fighters themselves. So break it down, go. Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I think I like Rose in the fight. I like Rose in the fight. She's stone cold. She does that. She never smiles. She does. I, it could be her time. I think it could be her time. I think it's a good setup for. You have to talk into the fight. microphone. I keep telling. You. What are you looking at? <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, looking, he's looking at the author. Brady's, 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 Brady's trying to armbar his microphone. Yeah, 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 it's very yeah, strange. Yeah, 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 yeah. The technique that he's yeah, using yeah, yeah, on the okay, microphone okay, right okay, now. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> Cole, Cole main event. Cody Garbrandt. I want to hear more show. Brady though. Oh, Brady, 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 break down the Cody. I need more Brady. Break down the. Hey, and I just want to reiterate this fact. The Cole. 
fucking main event. Cool main event. That, we got the eyebrow plucker. Plucker. We got and, the eyebrow uh, plucker. Bl- Jesus Christ. Plucker. We got the eyebrow plucker fucker. <laughs> from, from, Business translator. <laughs> Cody Garbrandt is taking on TJ Dillashaw in a vital clash yet at 135 pounds. And both of these guys said if they win, they want to fight uh, Don, Mighty, um, Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Mighty yeah. Mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Brady, go. I mean, into the microphone. It's going to be a good fight. TJ's good. We spent some personal time together on the. <laughs> what, do what do we call him? What do we call him? The Dilladong. That's the thing. The, the, the thing everyone keeps asking me about that fight, and I'm like, TJ has a huge dick. He has a fucking giant penis. Does he got um, a big old dick? Oh, I, I think they need to. They Told can you you like talking they about can dicks. Have a dick I have a question. A giant, it's a donger. Is it a big dick compared yeah, to he, most guys, or is it a big dick on the size of his body? No, like, no, if, no, no, if his no, dick was no, on no, my no, body, no, would it still look big? He has a bit of a hog. Listen, listen. Because look, my dick and TJ Dillashaw's hand look huge. He weighed in naked. He weighed in naked. He didn't even have have to just so he can show us all <laughs> Did his he really? dick. Yeah. Where was I? Yeah, no, no, no. no yeah, that, that was I always miss the good stuff. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 no. He walked off and you were like, hey, TJ. It's a nice dick. Nice dick. <laughs> you, did. <laughs> you did. Oh, I, don't, I, 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 I do not recall that episode. You got a nice dick as well. Yeah, he's, he's like, wow. Well, TJ. <laughs> Credit where credit's quite, due. Quite yeah. a dick. You know, hey, 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 fair play. You got you a gotta solid piece. You got to be comfortable, dude. You got to be comfortable. In the locker room, I, I'll tell you right now, I'm the guy who fucking wears the towel around my waist. If I had a big dick to walk around the locker room, just swear, yeah. I would. Yeah, that's, that's, I hate that's that. What... In like, you know, when you go into a public gym and you always got the old dudes with the cock yeah. swinging, you, you know, so I have a little bit of shame. Cover it up just a little bit, yeah. please. You, but they're always like, Standing there with the legs spared, scratching the head. They're there at the game. You get you know, at the yeah, gym. They're up, there when you picking leave. Picking the toenails, <laughs> you know. Yeah, no. um, Brady loves that actually. Hangs out in the locker room. You go and you walk into a locker room, you're going to see some dick. Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay I, 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 and you're fine with that. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 you, yeah. <laughs> I frequent. <laughs> you had to see the facial expression. All right, really okay. All right, so, so, so who wins? <clears throat> it's a tough fight. Uh, Kobe. Kobe going out and Cody, um, Kobe? Cody, Cody. whatever his name right. is. Um, his last fight with Cruz was absolutely spectacular. It really was. It was. He he, he does his. He, he definitely does his work. He's a physical beast. He has that knockout power. He's watching a ton of video and he performs. Look at oh, that. Oh, that dong right there. I'm sorry. Thing. Not to bring it back. No, look, but at look at, that look at it. Thing. Jesus Christ. Look at it. It's, oh it's waving God. to me. They had to wait on a separate scale. <laughs> um, so, so, on your body. so here's the thing, though. Yeah. Here's the thing. See, see, I'm, and of course, MMA math doesn't stack up, but I'm um, basically judging, well, Picking who wins this fight based upon both of their matches with Dominic Cruz. TJ's match against um, Cruz was super close, and actually, no disrespect to Cruz, I actually thought TJ won it. Uh, as well. You know, but it, but it was close. It was close. Whatever. You know, God bless Dominic Cruz. Great. He was a great champion. Who knows? He might be champion again one day. TJ, when he fought Cruz, you know. It was a clear victory. You know, he dropped him several times. He out-wrestled Cody. him. This and, uh, sorry, pardon me. Yeah, when he fought Cody. So, you know, when you look at those two, you know, they have the one similar opponent, which is Dominic Cruz, and, and Cody just had an easier time of it. Now, of course, that's not the way MMA works. MMA math does not stack up. But based purely on those two fights, looking at them, I'm going to go with Cody. That said, you know, I mean, TJ's last fight against John Lineker, was that his last fight? I think it was. To call his last fight yes. against John Lineker, I mean, that was an absolute shutout. And if you saw la- on last night's fight in S- Sao Paulo, John Lineker was facing that Marlon Vera. And he, you know, was half the size of that Marlon and was all over it. He was all, and he, he looked spectacular. But when you look at what TJ did to John Lineker, I mean, that just says to how good TJ Dillashaw mm-hmm. is. And we know from on the show, yeah, TJ's amazing. He he's really is. Yeah, here, here's the thing. I think with both um, Cody and Ioana, they're both undefeated. There's something really about that. When a guy hasn't been defeated, uh, you know, there's no... There, it's, it's very it's difficult special. to pick against them. And it's not like they're undefeated coming in from a smaller organization and now they're at the big show. It's like, no, no, no. Ioana has beat the best of the best. Everybody put in front of her. Uh, you know, Cody Garbrandt may be a little bit newer, but he, dude, what he did to Dominic Cruz, I mean, it was, it was incredible. He looked... Like he could be thrown in the pound for pound uh, conversation easily yeah, it, after it that was fight. An amazing exactly, fight. that's why he's getting so big for his boots and saying yeah. that he's the real main event, which we all know he's not. Anyway, no, you, not were you were saying, you were saying, you were saying. But the point, the point Just is, wanted though, to interject with that point. There's no, there's no map to beat either one of these guys. It's, I can't pick against either one of those guys because of that reason specifically. So I got to pick Cody. Well, I you have pick to Yuana. pick somebody. Oh, yeah. So you, oh, so well, pick. no, I pick no, I pick Cody and Yuana. You have to. Okay. All right. And what about the main event? 
George Saint. Let's pretend that I'm not here. GSP all day. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just did such a you just did such a spectacular job of breaking down the fight. Of course. Now yeah. let's pretend now I am I'm, I'm gonna go for a walk. Michael Bisping's gone. I'm, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. He's, I'm not here. You break it down. I am not sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> and let me just tell you a story. Let, for one, you were the guy farting the whole time. <laughs> it was him. Well, it, was, it certainly it wasn't was me. Him. I haven't ingested enough. Uh, calories at all. I wish I could break wind, but I but I certainly can't. Yeah. But but that reminded me. I mean, for one, we're on air on my goddamn podcast, so don't say <laughs> oh you're farting. Because it reminds me of one time I was DJing in Australia, right? I was DJing in Australia, and the DJ booth was elevated on like on like a stage, and everyone's looking. It was a busy club. It was a nice place, and uh, my boy Jacko and a couple of other friends we were all there, and. Um, <laughs> You could smell something. I'm like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, and it wasn't me. And there stood behind me, right? And you could clearly smell something nasty. And they're going, Wah! I'm pointing at me as if I farted. I'm like, you asshole. <laughs> I'm on a stage DJing and you're blaming me for the smell when it wasn't even me. I was so pissed because lots of people could see. I was like, fuck you. I didn't fart. Kiss my ass. Anyway, I'm going to go for a walk. All right, you go for Everybody. a walk. Break down the fight between me and Jay. All right. I'm not in the room. All right, Mike Blessman just left. Gotta hate him, guys. He's so cocky. I mean, everything everything he makes it about him. You know, every time you turn around, it's like me, 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 me. He's always telling us to shut up. I know. Bragging about the food that he buys you. Oh, I can't find that it's <laughs> Bragging about the food he buys you. <laughs> no, we get you. it, dude. You're, you're a champion. You should be buying the food, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? No, Mike, we're, no, we can't I'm pretend back. you're on. Right. back. Right. Do we? No, no. I, here's the thing. I would have, and a lot of people give me shit because I, look, I have to pick you, obviously. We all have to pick no, you. No, 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 but, but, but if I wasn't But from here, a purely logical what would standpoint, you say? What would I you would say? say that GSP is going to lose this fight. I really would. Uh, if you look at it, just take out all the facts, okay? GSP, it's four years off. I know, you know, we're going to pretend that it's the best GSP ever, but I'm sorry. That's a really, really big deal. And the way that GSP lost that, or the way that GSP won that last fight, he got his fucking ass kicked. And, I, and Johnny Hendricks, in my opinion, doesn't do what you do in the striking department. And, and to be honest with you, uh, I don't see, I don't really see the game plan where GSP comes in and he's more athletic than ever and just takes you down and does what every 205 pound wrestler and 185 pound wrestler has had a hard time doing with you. So that's why I, I picked you in the fight. I, I honestly, believe, well, of course, I think I'm going to win. I mean, that's first and foremost. As a fighter, you, ha you have to think that. If you go into any fight thinking you're not going to win, then you're not going to perform to the best of your ability. Yeah. And I truly do believe I'm going to win. That said, I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park. I really don't. I respect George. He's good. He's, he was the champion for a long time. He defended the belt nine times. That's an incredibly hard thing to do. That is not easy to do. He's a consummate professional. He's, very, he, he's a very intelligent fighter. He's a very high fighter IQ. So he's going to look at my fights. He thinks he's going to be able to find a secret recipe and break it down and have the perfect game plan. Ultimately, the perfect game plan that he th he's thinking of is going to be the same fucking game plan that he uses each and every time. And it's going to come down to a little shitty kick, a jab, jab, double leg okay will he get me down I dare say he might get me down here and there but I'll get right back up I've been trained with better wrestlers than George St. Pierre I'll stop those takedowns I'll get back to my feet when I get back to my feet that will diminish him that will crush his soul that will crush the fire inside him and I will pick him apart on the feet and then he will start wearing down and I will get the knockout he's going to be like a rabbit in the headlights four years away when Bruce Buffer says go I'm going to be all over him from the opening bell and if he gets me down I'll pop back up uh, but ultimately regardless of what round it is it will be Michael Bisping via uh, TKO knockout whatever do you have a specific prediction when you when you visualize it or are you even that fighter I, you don't come off like that fighter you don't come off like the fighter where you mentally go three minutes into the third round is when it's going to all happen and well anyone that says that is full of shit and then yeah. that's just what they're hoping for because you can't plan that because there's too many variables in MMA you can't say oh the way I see this going down you know you you, you pick a round and, and if it happens great uh, you can say sometimes I'm going to win in the first round because I'm, I'm so much better than this guy and I'm going to crush him and I'm going to try and crush George inside the first round but also you got to be careful because by being too aggressive that could play into George's game if I go hunting him and stalking him right from day one from the opening bell I could walk into a double leg takedown and get taken down So that, and that's what he wants he wants me to be over aggressive uh, but I am going to be aggressive but I'm going to be cautiously aggressive uh, that said I do see myself winning God bless George good try bon voyage do you, is there a fight you watched that made you go like that's kind of the the 
that that you let me the better question is there any fight that you've watched of his that you kind of extracted information from where you felt as if like that's really important to know um not really because i mean if you look at the nick diaz fights and the carlos condit fights they're two tall guys they're the tallest guys that he's fought and they like to strike so you could say the similarities there but they're a lot smaller than i am neither of them really know how to stop a takedown, if I'm honest. And I mean that with the greatest of respect. Nick Diaz and Carlos Condit are fantastic fighters. But the, the, for George St. Pierre, they were bad matchups. Now, they, they kind of remind me, and, you know, Diaz has probably got better jiu-jitsu off my back. I'm not, off his back, I'm not saying that. But they kind of remind me of myself a long time ago. When I first got in the UFC, I couldn't stop a takedown to save my life. I was good on the ground. I had good stand-up, but I couldn't um, stop a takedown. Now I can stop takedowns, and I've got way better on the feet, and I'm better on the ground, thanks to these two guys standing right here. I'm way more dangerous on the feet. I'm way better off the ground, and I can stop takedowns. So I look at those two fights, and I think, yeah, they did some good things on the feet, but they got taken down. I'm going to accentuate the good things that they did on the feet, but I'm not going to get taken down. Yeah. Oof. I'm sick of fucking saying this shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Con- Condit fight's the one that I kind of look at it as like, you know... The which I, one? I guess the Condit, Condit, Condit yeah. is the, uh, I guess, probably the most similar fighter to you that he's faced. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess. You can draw similarities. Yeah, I guess Nick is more like a, like a straight-up, you know, boxer. He doesn't really... He doesn't really kick as much. But, um... Yeah, look, dude, we're fucking super pumped about this fight. Obviously, everyone's picking Mike to win the fight. Um, I'm going to pick officially third round TKO, Michael Bisping. Boom, that's a safe bet. That's not bad. That's a good one. That's very safe right there. So, um, I like that. We wish you the best of luck in that. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm in the best shape of my life. I'm going to have the best weight cut of my life. I've had the best training camp of my life, and that's a fact. Jason, I've been knocking fools out left, right, and center, right? Every spar. We sparred three days a week, and Mike stopped a guy every sp- <laughs> yeah, you definitely want my mouth in this yeah, one. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no, but if you said that line again, it was no, so good. No, it was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but in all, in all reality, he has. He's been stopping guys the last every sparring session. He's stopping guys in the gym, and I, I mean that's what I always look. I knockouts, mean, knockouts, yeah. stopped, knockouts. He broke a guy's jaw. I'm not going to name his name, but uh, he had to pull him out of the out of a Bellator fight. But he broke his jaw with Whoa. that. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean to. Yeah. I didn't mean to. I just fucking kicked so hard. What can I say? Um, it was a kick. <laughs> it was a kick. Um, no, and I, and I have been, and I haven't been trying to knock people out. I've been knocking them out with kicks, with punches, with knees. I've been choking people. Yeah, it's out. Like the Bisping translator. Yeah. He was just trying to say hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. But no, but it's true though. It's true. And and I I feel now at the my peak as a mixed martial artist. I really do. Uh, that's because I am. I really am. At 38 years old, people think that's crazy. I saw some journalists saying, oh, yeah, Bisping's kind of diminished a little bit. That's absolute nonsense. Uh, and for those reasons, I truly believe I'm going to beat George St. Pierre because I've had the best camp. I'm in the best shape. It's crazy how much Mike's improved since uh, even the Dan Henderson fight in the last year. It's crazy. I mean, everybody says that, you know, you're always going to fucking talk, talk positive about your guy. But at the end of the day, I mean... It's crazy how much he's developed, even the last year. I mean, he's a, he is at the top of his game. It's going to be a great fight. Very and excited I, about it. Yeah. Got Mike. What were we no, say? I was going to say, and I think on that note, whilst it's been very, you know, we should, should we wrap this Let's up? Let's wrap this one goodbye? up, baby. Listen, it's been a great show. Real one, I really quick wanted to just talk uh, uh, about this uh, as we end the show. You guys have heard us read ads for, you know, uh, even today, Bet DSI. You heard us read an ad for Thrive Market earlier on today. And uh, these are all companies that we truly believe in here on the show. We don't take, we, we get no, a lot no, of no, sponsors. No, 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 that's absolutely right. I mean, because we get, we, we get people that want to advertise with us all the time. Yeah. And, and I'm sure if anybody's taking us up on any of these suggestions that they're, they're surely not disappointed because I use them all. BetDSI.com is amazing. Thrive Market, as I said, is, is a fantastic deal and quality produce that you want to put inside your body. And all the other things that we've used in the past are fantastic. So whilst we do horse around and have fun and this and that, um, please take advantage of these fantastic of offers. It's, and, the, and the ads are great because they keep the show free for you guys on iTunes and Google Play and all these other platforms that you download them on. Um, it's a win-win for everybody. And we're happy to have the help of expertise of mid-roll media to ensure that, uh, that that it continues and we continue to have great advertisers. So here's the deal, okay? Um, if you want to help us out, um, if you're interested in advertising on our show, if you're a business, you can go to midroll.com slash believe. 
and click contact to let the folks at Midroll know. They also represent a bunch of other great shows um, like The Fighter and the Kid, like Legion of Skanks here on the network. Um, and you can reach an array of listeners by working with Midroll. So go to midroll.com slash believe. That's M-I-D-R-O-L-L dot com slash B-E-L-I-E-V-E. And uh, check them out. And uh, you guys can maybe start advertising on some amazing podcasts. And I believe that is the end of this episode.